Good afternoon, good evening. Good afternoon, my brother. What's going on with you? Top of the morning. Man, I can't, I, 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 I can't complain. No need. Yes. Alive. That's right. Speak to him. Speak to him. What about yourself? Same here, man. Grateful to be alive. That's right. That's right. Yep. And we're going to talk about Paul. Saul okay. today. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's the that's my big interest right there. Cause, uh, you know, my pastor preaches on that. Um, Paul talks about Paul quite a bit. So, you know. So, uh, yeah. That's, oh, for real? Okay. Time. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Paul, Paul the Apostle, man. That's the, that's the man. You know, he's the, uh, um, what can we call him? I guess he's the. Supreme missionary, I guess you could say. You know, okay. So. Yeah. So, I actually um, have. I had, you know, I have quite a few messages on Paul, right? Uh, have I you, assume that uh, I do. Uh, I have listened. Yes. Yes. Have you heard of the one? Where um, it's called Bulas. Called what? Bulas. Paul Bulas. No. No. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, let me see what I can do. Um, let me see what I can do. What I'm going to do is. I'm going to be doing a stop and elaborating with you, but I'm going to play some of that. All right. Is that all right? But I want to make sure you can hear it. Okay. So all right. I'm going to play it in just a second. Yeah, man. I was up early this morning, man. <laughs> I normally I normally get up early in the morning Then I lay back down Then I I get up That's my routine But I had definitely made sure I had uh, set my alarm For you this morning <laughs> Yeah and I messed around It works out better here. this way too it, it's, it's fine um, Good well if we're going to do this Um then let's keep it Mondays at this time because uh, um, I messed up because uh, I, I helped somebody with payroll and stuff when they're out of town and okay. uh, with the employees. Okay. And I uh, was uh, trying to get that stuff straightened and have it done yesterday, but it didn't work out. Okay. So some people want beer today, so that kind of set me behind. But, uh, yeah, but this would be the best time because anything i got to do on Mondays is done by this time. Even before him, so. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here real quick. Let me get this message. Yep, here it is. All right. So here it is, real quick. Let me see how it sounds. All praises are due to I hear Allah, it well. the beneficent, right. the merciful. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad indeed is his messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. We are going to deal with the Apostle Paul today. And I have some interesting evidence from the Bible. And we're going to put it all on the table. I have sources from the Hadith, and I have scriptures from the Quran. Now, we're going to deal with the Apostle Paul. First thing I want you to understand is that Paul was a jailer. Paul bound those who called on the name of the Lord. This is going to be Acts 9, 14. 
And here, speaking of Paul, he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on your name. This is the Apostle Paul, okay? At this time, his name was Saul, okay? And he had authority from the chief priests to bind all those who called on the name of Jesus. Now, note, the things that I'm bringing out, you're going to have to be advanced in the Bible to catch this. This is not for a surface reader. So if you don't have an extensive amount of time in studying the Bible, then these things that I'm bringing out might go over your head. And that's the same with most of the stuff that I'm bringing out on my channel. It's for those who have fully studied the Bible. Then you'll be able to catch what I'm bringing out. Now, we just established the fact that Paul was a jailer. Now, he also worked as a tent maker. Paul was a tent maker as well as some of his fellow disciples, okay? And that's going to be in Acts chapter 18, verse 1 through 3. I'm going to read verse 3. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them at Roth, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So we have Paul as a jailer, and then we have Paul as a tent maker, okay? For those who have studied, you should already know where I'm going. Okay? All right, now, we understand that Paul's occupation was he made tents, and prior to to him becoming a apostle um he was locking up and jailing folks and right now there is a connection with him now one thing my brother mike is types and shadows is something i go over all the time now are you familiar with a type in the shadow? Uh, yes, somewhat, yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you what a type in the shadow is, my brother. A type in the shadow is a pre-picture of something before it happens. Like, for instance, God's word is, like, secretly coded. So, if you try to change something in the future is not going to sit right with the types and shadows. For instance, Joseph. Now we know who Joseph is, right? Yes. All right. Now, Joseph, he's a picture of somebody. Now, what are some things that Joseph have in common with Jesus? Joseph, you could say, saved his people from starvation and death, famine, because famine will eventually lead to, to death. So there's two types of salvations. For me, there's a, the eternal salvation, and there's also salvation here on this earth. I mean, we offer that to our children. Uh, the father is the salvation of, of his family here while we're here on earth. Um, and uh, Joseph saved his people from death as well as Christ himself. Has done the exact Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. He has saved his people also from um, death, uh, eternal death. Anyway, oh well, I can't say eternal. Yeah, eternal death. Yeah, you might as well say. It. But uh, yeah, he he also has. Uh, he's a type of. Uh, uh, he's Christ, and uh, Joseph is a type of Christ. Even I guess you could say in some cases the Messiah. Yes. He also suffered as Christ. His own people. Uh, were his own brothers were against him, All and right. he went through the same, you know, sufferings just as uh, Christ went through some suffering. Even his brother James didn't believe in his family, didn't believe in him. And tell him if this is who you are, you know, go and look and show yourself, you know, you know. So that's where I'm at with that. Nah, leave it at that. All right. Well, I'm gonna take my time with you, and I want to show you some stuff. There's there's a whole lot, a whole lot more now. There, 
from the beginning, Joseph was a shepherd. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that's Genesis 37, 2. And Jesus, he called himself the good shepherd. That's John chapter 10, verse 11. Now, Joseph was beloved of his father. That's Genesis 37, 3. Jesus was beloved of his father. <laughs> Matthew 3, 17. Now, Joseph was hated by his brothers. That's Genesis 37, 4, 5, and 8. Jesus was hated by his brothers. That's John 15, 25. Luke 19, 14. Um, John 5, 18. Joseph foretold of his future. And he talked about, you know, the sun bowing down to him, the moon and, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And... In Christ's life, that's what the people were doing. All right. Joseph was sent mm -hmm. by his fathers. Joseph was sent by his father, rather, to check on his brothers. Jesus constantly kept saying he was sent by his father to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Joseph's brothers plotted to kill Joseph. The Jews plotted to kill Christ. Okay. And... There's so much, man. Watch. I'm going to give you some more. I'm going to give you some more. All right. Uh, Joseph was stripped of his coat. Supposedly, Jesus was stripped of his coat. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. His brothers, while eating, intended to slay him. Same thing with Jesus on the Passover. Joseph was... Um. Let me see. Sold for redemption price with the silver. Jesus was sold for redemption, uh, 30 pieces of silver. Uh, Joseph's coat was sprinkled with goat blood. Now, Jesus' supposed coat was sprinkled with blood as well. And even um, his garment, uh, they cast lots for it. Joseph became a servant. Joseph, Jesus was a servant. Um, there's so much, man. Now, look, I'm going to show you some more. Watch this. Joseph was falsely accused. Jesus was falsely accused. Um, Joseph gave no defense. Apparently, Jesus gave no offense. Joseph was jailed with prisoners. Okay. And they say Jesus was crucified with the criminals. Now, I'm going to keep going. I got more. I got more. I got more. All right. So watch this. Joseph desired to be remembered by the cupbearer. Remember, he was like when he um, interpreted the person's dream and mm -hmm. he was like, hey, man, remember me. Remember me. Mm -hmm. And remember, mm -hmm. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. OK. And, and it's going into com communion. OK. Mm -hmm. Now. This is crazy. Watch this. Joseph is exalted and set over all. Now, in the Bible, they say Jesus is highly exalted by God. The Bible says that, G that Joseph was a governor. He was a governor. The Bible mm -hmm. says that Jesus would be a governor. All right. So mm -hmm. Joseph was 30 years old. When his ministry began, Jesus was 30 years old. OK, when his ministry began. <laughs> all right. Yep. Joseph became the savior to all the people. OK, and <clears throat> Jesus, according to the Bible, Jesus is the savior of his people. All right. Watch this, man. Watch this. I still got more. I still have more. Um, Joseph was revealed to his brothers at their second coming. Okay, so the first time they seen mm -hmm. him, he was just like them. The next time they see him, he's a governor. Well, the same mm -hmm. thing with Jesus. You know, they say uh, he came. 
And then when he returns, he will come back as a just ruler. So let me give you a few more, a few more, a few more. Um, there's so much, so much with look at Joseph, a J, Jesus, a J. OK, there's look what what this is, my brother. Now, Christians, they know about types and shadows. There are some Christians that know about these things. OK, they have articles on these things. But this is the thing, my brother. Um, these types in shadows is meant to guard us from Bible corruption. Like, for instance, God will show you a story of something in the Old Testament. And guess what is going to happen? He's going to show it to you again. He's going to show you again because history repeats itself. And I know you're familiar with Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse nine. And it says something along these lines. It says there. It says the thing that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It have been already of old time, which was before us. So everything that we see in the Bible is constantly repeating itself. There's nothing new. Every story you see, you see how Joseph was set up, thrown in the pit, just like Jesus was set up. And not just him, there's many other types and shadows of many different prophets, not just Joseph. But Joseph was one just for me to show you a little quick picture of types and shadows. Now, there's something strange about the type and shadow of Joseph that don't line up with Jesus. Now, remember, let's go to that scripture where Joseph was thrown in a pit. And this is going to be in the book of Genesis, chapter 37 is where it starts, okay? He was telling his brothers his dreams, okay? He told his father, and his father was like, are you saying me and your mama is about to worship you, boy? You know what I mean? But he, he his brothers hated him for his dreams. But the Bible says his father uh, observed the matter. I'm going to get that for you real quick so I don't butcher it. This is going to be Genesis 37, verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers Indeed, come to bow down ourselves to you to the earth. They like, man, he like, man, what's going on with you? But watch this. And his brothers envied him for his dreams. But his father observed the saying. His father was a man of wisdom. His father was like, hold on now. I know we ain't fit to be worshiping my son, but I wonder what God is trying to show my son. He was he was thinking about the matter. OK, because Joseph. Joseph was a picture of Jesus in the future. OK, this is what everybody is doing right now. And you see how much sense Jacob had. Jacob, man, Jacob was a man of wisdom. He said, now, hold up. How me and your mama? Let's just pause right there. Skip your brothers right now. He said, how me and your mama going to bow down to you? The Bible says, honor your mother and father. How are we going to be bowing down to our son when God is God almighty? And then he says, shall your, shall your brothers indeed worship you? And then, you know, his brothers hated him for the dreams. But Jacob, mm -hmm. being a man of wisdom, he just observed it. He was just like, hmm. He kept it in his mind. He was just like, I wonder. I wonder what God is telling my son. Because remember, Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. He was his mm -hmm. good son. Now, I'm going to show you some more types and shadows of Jesus and Joseph. Now, think about it. Joseph was strikingly upright when the woman wanted to have sex with him. He said, how can I do this great evil and sin against my God? 
Okay, and he left, and all mm-hmm. she had was his coat in his, in her hand. Now, Jesus don't have a reputation of committing adultery and having sex. No. See, these two men, these two people, it's the same, the same spirit that was on Joseph is the same spirit that was on Christ. That same personality. Now, going on, this is the strange thing about the type and shadow that I wanted to bring out. Um, We have to go to Genesis 37 and let's go to verse 13. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brother feed the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I, here am I. And he said unto him, go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron and he came to Shechem. Now, do you remember what happened the first time Jacob sent uh, Joseph to check on his brothers? No, he, he brought them back in evil report. Oh, yeah, yeah, he 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 uh, uh he snitched on them. Yeah, 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 that's what he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So he brought them back in evil report the first time, mm-hmm. and now he's being, Chattel yeah, now he's being sent back the second time. Now, think about Jesus, he came the first time, okay, and now he's going to come again, now, but. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to keep reading. All right. So now um, he's going to check on his brothers. And a certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brother. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, they are departed hence. And I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit. That is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. Hmm. And his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him. And cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites. The Arabs. The Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels. (laughs) Bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brother, what profit is it that we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there were Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit 
and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brother and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. All right. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, they said, this have we found. Know not whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, it is my son. It is my son's coat. An evil beast have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins. And he mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So did did Jacob really get killed? I mean, did did Joseph really get killed? No. Nope. He didn't he didn't really get killed. OK, now what happened was his brothers killed something else and then mm -hmm. said, you know, is this your son's coat? Yay or nay. But what I'm trying to get you to see is the story of Joseph is very important, my brother, because the story of Joseph is a pre picture of what really happened to Christ. Now, this is what I believe. I'm not trying to force you to, on anything, but what I'm doing is I'm showing you a story in your Bible. This man has 60 parallels, about 60 things in common with the real Jesus. Now, think about it. Even on earth, who is Jesus' dad? Joseph. His dad name was Joseph. Okay. All right. Now, think about this. But, 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 but we have to go with one thing now. We got to be honest with it. Because if we don't, then we're misleading people. Okay. Joseph was a stepfather. I wouldn't even see more than yet. Actually, yeah. Um, well, well, no, no. Mary was overshadowed. Well, what I'm saying is in what I'm coming from kind of earthy point of view. Uh, he was not uh, Jesus' biological father. We, we know that. Nazareth. We know that. Yeah. We so know I that. Say that. I would say, I would say that. He is he is the father because uh, stepfather, but he's the one who raised him up as far as being a biological father. No, but he is a man that raised him up. He did have uh, he was a uh, uh, um, Jesus bar Joseph or uh, um, Joseph. I was go Joseph bar Jesus. I forgot. But anyway, uh, and uh, so, yeah, but yeah, he was responsible. Joseph was responsible for raising him up, of course, since. All the other Jews and the Pharisees didn't understand what was happening in their mind. It's finite in their mind. And their thoughts couldn't go above the top of their head. They constantly assumed that, and of course, since Joseph didn't put Mary away, that Joseph was his biological father. They just, I, I honestly believe in you, but if you, once you harden your heart and you insist on it, you know, they got overcome with power and greed. So that's kind of hard, like the Lord says very difficult for a rich man into the mm -hmm. kingdom of heaven, you know, and uh, uh, especially with power, you got that power. I know, you know, it can get like that, you know, so. But yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Okay, so when I say um, Joseph was Jesus' father, now this is the thing. In Islam, we believe that Jesus was um, spoken into existence. In other words, we know that he doesn't have an earthly father. We agree with you. Now, but this is the thing in the Bible, Luke chapter two, verse 48 and 49, it says, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, 
your father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. So, yes, we I agree with you that Joseph is not the biological father. But in the Bible, there are stories where they, they still call Joseph his father, even though we know for a mm. fact, even though we know for a fact he had no father. We have no confusion with that at, at, at all in Islam. Now, in Christianity, there is confusion because you got some people who say that he was born of a virgin. And then you got some people who actually believe that Joseph was his real father. And it's crazy because of little scriptures like that, you know, and it's like, no. That was he was his guardian. OK, but he wasn't his father. That's why Jesus said, I must be about my father, my heavenly father's business. OK, uh -huh. in other words, he was saying, Joseph ain't my daddy, <laughs> you know, but but going mm -hmm. but going on back to where we was at. OK, the story of Joseph is so awesome. Well, because, well, hold on one thing. Go ahead. You said. Christians believe that uh, uh, Jesus was born through a Joseph. virgin. Yeah. There are and some Christians that believe that. That's not true. Yeah. I know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't believe it. Because I can. Me personally, I can believe it. And this this, this is why. Um, Jesus. I mean, we're talking about. <clears throat> And so, you know, the hardest thing that I notice about man is that we can't get ourselves away from ourselves. We don't die like Jesus tells us to die, that if you are to save your life, you must lose it in life and the renewing of the mind and how we have to step away from ourselves. And the only thing that's supposed to, when people look at me, which happened, which, you know, when they look at me, they're supposed to, I, I look like, Michael Nicholson, but my I'm I'm not the same person because I have been renewed. I have been born, and the one thing that I it's easy for me to believe when I look at how the human body operates, work, and that's what I you know that's what I do when I look at the these sixty thousand miles of blood vessels, capillaries, and veins that connect connect can actually go and 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 they were to stretch them without without any breakage could stretch to each. From right where I stand right now, because they can stretch my what's in within me, and it will touch all 50 states. When, you know, and like the Lord says, we are wonderfully and marvelously created, but we cannot get away from ourselves, you know, because like he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are higher than yours. And we got to ask that, what does he mean? He's thought, yeah, well, when we come with that basic man, earth, finite thinking in some of the verses we have to consider because I had no problem at all believing that she was a complete, especially with the way the scripture says she was a virgin. And uh, I understand that because it couldn't, if, if Christ came, because there'll be another argument where the church would get, where, where, the, where the church of Christ would get completely shut down and considered frauds if Mary had been married to Joseph and then she, and maybe had consummated, maybe even had a, well, we know they're going to consummate, they're married, they consummate the same night. But even if they had a, a child before Jesus or, um, uh, or, or, or just was married and then, uh, 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 uh Christ came, there would be the argument that she was unholy. She was touched by the imperfect skin and the sin of man. She is the reason. And, and since the seed, cause within me, I got my wife don't carry no seeds. I carry the seed. Mm -hmm. My seed has it's amazing because when I think about it, my, when I think about the children that are hitting me right now, you know, there's a soul that comes with that from a little polywog, you know, to this. It's amazing. But no man can no man can 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 re, re, can recreate that. And the creator is always with his creation and everything is created unless he dies. But creation is always in touch with his creation. But um, uh, I have no problem there because he had to. Jesus would be considered all man if Mary had any sexual, because now she's put a, 
She's now by flesh. If she had any touch at all with man, Jesus would be, would, could not be the Savior because he would be born of sin. And that sin would come through Joseph. So I have no problem at all with believing that, uh, uh, like you said, he chose her. She's a virgin. I guess she was, what, about 15 or something like that, but she's pure. No man has laid hands on her. Like she said, no man out this up, no man is touching. Yeah. And we can't avoid that. And yeah. She, and see, and see, when, and the thing about that verse right here, when she says that, when people talk about the Bible, this part, I listen to folks talk about there's certain verses that are corrupt in the Bible. They pick the wrong ones because this verse is in there that I look at, man. You're going to say it's corrupt. This is the one you choose, and this will get people to question. But this one over here really don't even, even matter. Like the woman in adultery and stuff like that. I can see that as. Um, they said that part was added. They said it more, but the reason why it's in here is because it said most doctors, not all. And that's the key. Most of the original, it wasn't in there. But you can also use it as a pill because it actually describes Jesus, uh, mercy, his grace, and the truth about the Father. And oh, that is that there's only, like yeah. you said, there's only one sin that a man will actually never be forgiven of. And only one. And we got to keep it like that. We can't change that. But, but he showed her grace and mercy, and which is good because, according to the beginning, if Adam hadn't went off and followed in and and uh, been into the fruit uh, that he gave him, well, she may have never been accused of adultery. So that's the mercy of Christ. Thank God. Well, that's the mercy, and grace of God, is that they had mercy. So that story, even if it is. Uh, uh, I can see it as I would say, oh, well, what does that change? It changes nothing, but I see it as a story. That is, that would be the way Jesus would respond. I was wondering what he wrote that saying, whoever wrote it, they had it But the scholars say most, not all. So, you know, I can understand. But anyway, let me share it. Go ahead. But yeah, um, you know, you're talking about something juicy, and I want to jump in on that too. But, but, um, but, uh, I wanted to give you the percentage, um, uh, there's about 60 cent, 66 percent of Christians who believe in the virgin birth. 60 I'm one of them. It's about out of 100 percent of Christians, there's about 66 percent, not counting all the Israelite camps, because all of the Israelite camps for sure um, believe that joseph is the father and they go by paul's teach. they go by they go by but they go by paul's teachings because paul says that christ mm -hmm. was born of the seed of david in romans chapter one also you talked about um we kind of got off a little bit we, we talked about uh the scriptures being added to the bible and and when you was talking about um most oh, manuscripts oh, man. Well, the thing about yeah. that, the thing about that, brother, is the Bible was made from manuscripts and the oldest manuscripts. OK, the original, uh -huh. the original manuscript. Mm -hmm. OK, that we we got all of the manuscripts from. OK, we found some in the Dead Sea and in the Dead Sea Scrolls, <laughs> but the oldest ones we have do not have some of the scriptures like for instance um exactly. the fa yes. the 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 um, it talks about the father the son the father the holy spirit and this and the son is all one something like that in John chapter 5 and the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery is not in the original in the old um manuscript it's like, yeah. for instance, it's like, for, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 it's like, for instance, it's like, for instance, we all got the stories, okay, from an original source, and you can make copies, you can make copies, you can make copies, but when you have to go to the original, okay, because you want to make an original document then you have to go to the original source. And if the original source isn't, um, don't have that story, a lot of the Bible scholars, you got to think about it. They felt convicted. They was like, why would I put this story in there if it's not in 
the old one. So they was like, you know what? I'm not finna uh, be, be guilty of adding to the Bible. <laughs> I, I don't want to add. Just think what was on their conscience. And that's why when you look at some Bibles, they'll say, nope, this scripture is not there because it wasn't in the original. What they're doing is they're saving. They're trying to save their soul because that is a serious matter. For one, you we shouldn't even have none of those issues. We shouldn't have no issues. If the Bible is the inspired word of God, there should be one original copy with the same thing in my book and the same thing in your book. But there is an issue. There is a huge issue because how man, many, many, man many, like messing with stuff. Verses, how many verses in the Bible are corrupted? What are they? Um, right now there's about 16 omitted verses. That means the Bible translators, when they made the new Bible, they said, you know what? We're not going to put that in there because that was added, you know, and we, we know for a fact that there is, um, I'll give you a scripture to write down. I'll give you one real quick, um, for you to write down and this scripture for a fact is corrupt this is going to be second samuel chapter 10 verse 18 and then write down first chronicles 19 verse 18 hopefully you got those two and i want you to read them second samuel 10 18 and i want you to read first chronicles 9 19 18 okay oh yes yeah. Second Samuel ten eighteen. Okay. <clears throat> All right, read that. Second Samuel ten eighteen. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote. The captain of their host who died there. All right. So it was 700 characters, 40,000 horsemen. Now, you know what the book of uh, the book of Chronicles is, right? Yeah, Chron yeah, I do know what it is. Yes. The book of Chronicles is saying the same thing that Samuel's the book of Chronicles is a copy of the book of Samuel's. In the book of Kings, all in First Chronicles and Second Chronicles. So the same stories that are in the book of Samuel, the same stories that are in the book of Kings, for the most part, is in the book of Chronicles. That's what Chronicles is. It is a copy. Mm -hmm. It is a copy of Samuel, and it is a copy of of the book of kings it is the same story however sometimes chronicles go more in detail okay and there's some things that is said in the book of chronicles that's not in the the book of kings and the book of samuel now we talked about plagiarism and stuff like that last time and i don't want to go off on a wild tangent about it but this is just what i believe about it OK, this is just something I believe. I believe that the book of Samuel, the book of Kings, you know, that just represents a book. And I believe that the book of Chronicles, like Quran, Chronicles is another book. And I believe that there's details. There's details that are in the book of Chronicles that are not in the book of Kings. OK, like, for instance, if you was to pick up the Bible and you was to pick up the Quran, there's some stories that are in both books that are kind of similar. But there's details that are in the Quran that is not in the Bible. Vice versa. OK, but they do have some of the stories. And now you're going to read First Chronicles 1918. Now, hold on one second. Go ahead. Because the only problem I have with the stories that come from the Quran and that are found in the Bible is that uh, 
like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those first to market. 600 years is just too long. And if I were going to, and, and the only reason why I'm trying to think, why would I write a story that reflects the word? And hey, I forgot just, I forgot what story it is, but, but, um, Allah is telling the people of the Torah and the people of the gospel to, um, obey what's in it he sent it down it was sent out no you got it you got it you got to quote it right bro what is that what 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 is that yeah he told prophet bahamut that if you have any doubts to go to the people of the torah in the book who uh it was sit down before him and the prophet in the the quran that you have to be written and he's telling him what to do so uh my only thing there is i have to ask that question is why would this man why would allah do that well, we uh, got to get uh, that verse, man. We can't. We can't. Yeah, I know, I know, we can't. I know, we can't butcher it. No, no, no. I, I think I, I, I know I what you're talking about. Yeah. I think I and, know uh, what you're uh, talking well, about. We'll get you. We'll get you. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. Um, I think it's ten. I want to say ten twenty-three, but I'll get to it. But but um, my thing is this, bro. I'm a first to market man. Uh, six hundred years. 600 years, I just, you know, and then you're born into, and, and, and when I look at the growth of, uh, you know, uh, they say it's the fastest growing, but see, fastest growing, a lot of people say because it's the fastest growing religion, that it's, that, that means that it's the truth. But see, Jesus is talking about a remnant of people. And, mm-hmm. and a remnant is a portion of, if you got 50,000 people and there's some type of a disaster or something like that, and, and 40,000 of them, have been wiped out then ten thousand is the remnant not everybody but and uh that's why he says many are called few are chosen and that man yeah. was Jesus, you know so what i'm saying is that um uh, uh only a few uh, people when, is going to be saved anyway is basically what you're saying uh, god well, died jesus died like, for the it, world it, 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 you, you, you said you jesus it, died for the whole it, world but only but, a few people but making it in like, but like you said nicodemus like you told nicodemus <laughs> You must be reborn again. And that's what everybody misses is the rebirth. And uh here's where I'm at right now in, in, in the walk. I look at I look at um I look at the uh, knowledge and stuff like that. I hear things and stuff. But what really, 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 really matters, and this is what we're getting away from everybody so busy trying to prove each other wrong and stuff like that, that they're forgetting. On that death, the day of your deathbed, it's that deathbed. When I, the way I saw my mother go out, bro, oh, God, man. My mother went out hollering and screaming. Um, they said that she was in a, they said not an experienced death, you know, numbers of times going to people. Not even talking about no wild, crazy stuff. Just people, you know, you go and stuff, and, you know, and they die in the house, and people, you know, stuff like that. I'm talking about no crazy, you know, you know, I mean, we can go there, but that's not what I'm talking about, you know. Uh, you probably see more of that than I have. Um, but um, this one, and she, you know, she was, uh, 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 and, and I have to say, because I prayed this day, I said, Lord, take me and pray, you know, because, you know, she uh, attended, she was a member of the AME church. But the way she went out, something was going on, and the people said, this one little nurse said, I've never heard anybody do what she did. She kept, you know, I was there for a while, went all a while with her, and then she finally calmed down and stuff. I could see the glass, her, her eyes had, had glazed over and stuff, and, and she had a tube, and I, I wish that his dad had taken that down the tube out, but I just didn't think about it, because she probably would have had to speak. She had something from the stroke, but, but she, um, she, uh, she, uh, um, 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 the, the, this one nurse said, uh, uh, she never witnessed that before. And, uh, she was talking, she was like, ah, 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 and you could see her going and something was happening. What I don't know. What I hope wasn't happening is that she was going in the direction I hope she did not go in. Um, uh, uh, because the way it was, she was, she wanted to say something, but for whatever reason it struck us, it was me and my, and my sister struck us kind of as, you know, scared for her, you know, but, uh, they said she all in the mouth, she kept waking up and she's doing it and then she finally passed. But the way she went out, something happened. And like they say, they, they can't explain. Doctors say something that they can't explain. And this is that they said, no matter how large, tall, heavy the person is, 
that in their death, yeah, I can't come with the number because it was a while. I mean, we're talking about this back in eighty or something when I actually was reading this article. But they said, um, they said, uh, um, everybody loses. I'm just gonna give this number. I can't say exactly like this. It was a long time ago. Um, they said, but everybody seems to lose an extra ounce, or let's say two ounces, three ounces. Everybody. And they said we can't explain what it is. They can't explain it. And some people have come and said that's the soul leaving the body. But uh, what, the way I saw my mother go down um, uh, uh, and, and stuff like that, it was not pleasant. And and so when I look at that, what is our real purpose? Is my purpose to to say that a word is corrupt? Because the one thing I know about all of these books from the Mormons, the battle seems to be between Mormons, Jehovah's Jehovah's Witness, Islam, and Christianity. And, um, and like the Lord says, many will come in my name behind me. You know, uh, 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 claiming to be the Christ, and all four have a Christ and have their opinion about a Christ. But there's only one that talks about a new birth and a rebirth. And I know, oh, some very no, bro, new you, you, bro, you, when he said that he was talking about the Christians, he said many will come to be saying, "Lord, Lord, right, have yeah. not we did many works in your name oh, yeah, and cast exactly, out devils?" Exactly, but, yeah, exactly, that's not but that's not Muslims, but, man. That's not I'm, Hinduism. That is nothing but, but Christianity, bro. Yeah, but everybody, everybody's gonna step before the one God. Everybody's gonna step before the one God. Yeah, but That's you gotta, you gotta, like, yeah, you gotta say it right now. now. Think, about, think about this when you first. Let, let me ask you something. When you first, the first time that you got yourself, you know, in, uh, 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 you know, you got yourself involved with the courthouse, and the first time, and that judge, how did you feel? What? I mean, the first, you know, when you, you know, when you did, you know, you got your, 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 when you did your time. How did you feel when you stepped before the judge for sentencing? I was feeling like I had to do my I time. I mean, some people, some people, because see, what I'm saying is like, I, I know when I went, you know, my, my, my first time up was, you know, I ain't going to lie. I was like Satan because I'm about to be put somewhere I don't know nothing about. And I know my freedom's about to be ripped from me. In other words, in some ways, I'm about to die. And I, and, 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 and so and when I say about dying, my life has now come to a home. I'm now enslaved by some people. When people don't realize is that, is, is that you're gonna, every last one of us is going to step before for Christ, and we're going to be judged, judged on whether or not. Hold on. Why are you really? saying Christ? All of us don't believe we're going to be standing before Christ, bro. I know bro. that, brother. No, no, no. I I, Christ is not my God. Know. Christ no, is my I'm brother, talking, man. I'm not, I'm not talking about Jesus I'm Christ is my brother. He's not my I'm God. Huh? Oh, well, yeah. well, see, this is why I say, this is why I say this. Like the Father Hebrews. is God. Hebrews. Now, check this out. Hebrews. I wanted to give you the scripture on you said 500 years later. I wanted to give you uh, the scripture in John and Deuteronomy, but I'll wait for you. Go ahead. Because I can't get on a tangent. I can't talk about a hundred things at one time. And that's and that's what we're doing. No, 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 no. This is not a tangent. You just say some things. You say some things. And I just, you know, I I respond to them. That's all. It's not a tangent. Okay. Go ahead. Forget that. We'll get the Hebrews later. Go ahead and give me what you're getting. All right. Now, John in John chapter 14, he talked about the comforter. All right. And he says in John chapter 14, verse 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, John, where you at? There you go. Boy, these glasses don't do me no good at all. Okay. All right, I'm there. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So he talks about a comforter and then he says something along these lines. And this is all going to be seen in John. He says in John 16, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. You know what expedient means, right? Yes. 
Tell me. Expedient means I must go, and I must go quickly. Okay, so no, he's saying it. Now, there's it, more. Now, 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 there's more to it than that. Feel me in, bro. You know, I, you know. Expedient, expedient means it's better for you. It's better for you that I go away. He's already okay, saying he's going better. away, mm -hmm. so it don't mean mm -hmm. go away quickly. He's saying it's more okay. suitable. It's more better for you. In okay. other words, okay. he said it's better for you that I go away. For if I don't okay. go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if yes, I man. depart, I will send him unto you. Now, now, when we think about that, he was talking about something coming after him. He mm -hmm. didn't he didn't say, OK, look. Just chill. He said, look, it's better for me that I go away. Because if I don't go away, I won't be able to send the comforter. Now I want to go to Deuteronomy 33, and I'm going to let you answer this for me. Deuteronomy 33. Hold on a second, because these words, boy, my class has got these. I got to get a large word Bible. Deuteronomy 33, verse 13. Verse 13. This is Deuteronomy 33, verse 2. I'm going to let you read that one. All right, Deuteronomy, where I'm going to now? 33, verse 2. Deuteronomy 33, 2. Well, you got 33, 2. Yeah, you know, 33, 2. <clears throat> and he said, <clears throat> The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from <clears throat> Seir unto. <clears throat> And, the, and he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. All right, now, verse yeah, two. Wait a minute. You said 33 too, right? Yep, yep, yep. You got okay. it right on the money. I didn't read. Yeah. Now, I want, you to, I want you to tell me, look at that. Now, tell me what that means. He said, the Lord came from Sinai. What is he talking about right there, my brother? What do you mean by the Lord came from Sinai? Tell me, brother. I'm lost on that one. Fill me in. Now, where, what happened on Mount Sinai, my brother? Oh, the um, Moses the Transfiguration. Bingo. I'm going to give you a clap on that one, brother. I'm going to give you a clap on that one. Yeah, you're right. He came from Sinai is talking about Moses. Now let's keep reading. And rose up from Seir. What is that talking about, my brother? He's already talking about Moses. Okay. Now think about a man uh, throwing the football. Okay. You got a football, right? And you throwing a long yeah. pass. Okay. Think about it. You standing on Mount Sinai and you throwing this football and you throwing it through the ages of time. Now somebody caught this football in Sierra, what is that talking about? I'll give you a hint. What country is right next to Sierra on the map? Brother. What? I ain't in the geography. <laughs> <laughs> you going to have to Oh, bro, this, it ain't nothing but Bible. Hey, it's Judah. Uh -huh. Judah. Judah well, is right. Let me tell you something. When it comes to stuff like that part, that, I'm just not there. All right. I'm not, I'm not, I, I may, actually, I'll be very honest with you. I may never be there because my only concern really is the soul of man. Okay. And so, you know, so that's my focus. So I probably will never be. Well, I ain't going to say never be there. But yeah. Okay. Charge, brother, that's on you. You got to explain that. All right. So, see, see, air is right next to Judah. 
Okay, and remember mm-hmm. when Jesus would come down from the mountains. Do you know the, the, the stories when Jesus would preach on the mountains? Yes. Okay, you know what mountains those were? Those were Sierra, brother. Sierra <clears throat> is right next to Judah. So when Jesus did his sermon on the mount, when he would go to the top of the mountain and he would speak down to the people in his large and his loud authoritative voice, okay, he was preaching on the mountains of Sierra. Okay, now that's nothing I made up. You can look it up. Everybody that studies for the most part knows this. Okay, so now think about it. He 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 went from Sinai. Then he passed the baton, or he threw the ball all the way up to Jesus. Okay, Jesus catches it. Okay, now think about it. He skipped all those prophets. He, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all them. Okay, they prophets. But these right. But this this uh, scripture is talking about Moses, and right now it's talking about Jesus. Now let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. So the Lord came from Sinai. That's Moses. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, so where are we gonna where are we gonna go from? We still in verse two. Three, four. No, we still okay, in verse so two. We ch- we digest it. Right. See, we ain't just reading okay. the scripture to hurry up and get past it. We meditating on it. And he came okay. from Sinai, okay, and he mm-hmm. rose up from Sierra. From Sierra. Okay, that's Jesus. But watch this. It says he shined forth from Mount Paran. Now. Where is Mount Paran, my brother? This is basic information. I told you, brother. No, this no, no. I told you, brother. I, I just throw it out there. I ain't going to sit up here and try to say I'm something that I'm not. You got your phone? Because I, I, don't, I don't like... I got my phone. I, I don't phone, like... Yeah. Uh, I do not like... Um, people not being able to see it for themselves. Like I can tell you about my grandma's okay. apple got, pie, got but got you got to taste it. You got to taste okay. it. Okay, I got my phone. All right. Okay, it's nothing like when you look up something for yourself versus somebody telling you. Okay, okay. and you true. Very true, true. Okay. Go ahead, I'm missing. I got my phone, like I said. I got my phone, so if you want me to pull something up. All right. I want you to type there? in Mount Paran Mecca. Type in Mount Paran Mecca. <clears throat> you can look that up. Mount Paran. Come on. Mount Paran Mecca. M-C-C-A, the desert of Paran, the Arabian Peninsula. Okay, so I'm going to let you see it. I want you to see what, what comes up. It's going to bring up Araba. Araba <laughs> is Mount Paran. Mecca, where, Mo, where uh, right, Malcolm X. Okay, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Is this, this, should be a, this, this should be an image because I got text on it. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, it's, it ain't going to be an image. Go it's going to say Wikipedia Desert of Paran. Okay. Let me, okay. All right. Okay. And I then, it, it, and then okay. it brings up stuff like, where is Paran today? The desert of Paran or wilderness of Paran, also sometimes spelled Paran or Paran Hebrew, uh, is a location mentioned in the Hebrew Bible that is one of the places where the Israelites spent part of their 40 years of wandering. Yep, After it was wandering ocean. in the wilderness of Paran. God had him ra- wandering there. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. And was also a home to Ishmael and a place of refuge for David. Okay, so David. That's all, that's all this is, Wikipedia is giving me. David was in Arabia when he was running from King Saul. Okay, the children mm-hmm. of Israel, God made them wander in Arabia. That's the same place. Where God put, where uh, Abraham put Hagar and Ishmael out. They was in the wilderness of Paran. Okay. So 
Now we want to go back to this. We want to go back to where we was at. Now he's talking about Moses. Okay. Okay. Then he switched and he talked about raising up from Sierra. Now the Christians, they believe Jesus rose from the grave. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. In Islam, we don't believe he had a grave. We believe that he just rose up. We believe that Allah took him. Okay. We don't need to fight about that. Okay, so we see in, in this scripture, he's talking about Moses and he's talking about Jesus. But now this is what God says in the scripture. It says he shined forth from Mount Paran. Now, Paran yes. is Arabia. Okay, it is actually Mecca. And it says, and he came with ten thousands of saints. So he is still talking about Paran. And then it said, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. So he passes the football from Moses all the way up to Jesus. And then Jesus throws the football through time to somebody, somebody in Paran, somebody who came after him. Okay. And now this person. Whoever he is, he's in Arabia. He has 10,000 people with him. And with his right hand went a fiery law. Now, are you familiar with what happened in um, Mecca in 629 CE? I am not familiar with what type, happened. Type, type, type in, type in 629 CE. Because you're talking about this 600 years and all that. And I and I, you know what? I'm not making you believe anything. I believe. No, you're not. And, and, and you're it's not, the same thing. I am, you're not making me I'm bring not, your stuff, man. You type in. I'm learning. Type in. All right, so. 629 CE. 629. CE. 629 CE. Yep. Just 629 type in 629 CE. CE yeah. And then type in 10,000 saints. 10,000 saints. Yep. 629 CE, <clears throat> 10,000 saints. 10,000. All you got to do is type in. You ain't even got to put. I got it. You got it? I'm there. I'm there. I got, yeah, I'm going to type in the whole thing now. All right. Now, All right, I, want I, to, I want you to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I Something want you. happened, I guess. 629. Why did he do that? 629 CE. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We got it. I'm in Wikipedia. 10,000. Okay. okay. So. What you're going to do is you got, you got, I want you to read and tell me what you got, what you typed in. So I know if you searched it right. I typed in 629 CE, common error, 10,000 saints. Now, did you put 10,000 as in a number? Yes. All right. Now, I want you, the first thing you'll see, it says, what is the now, meaning? Now, hold on, hold on. Should I put the S in there? Because it just says saint. Oh, he's going to make it no different. Uh, it don't make no I'll difference. It. it don't make no difference. You ain't okay. got to put no S. Now, the first right. thing you should see is what is the meaning of A D B C B C C E. You see that, right? Okay. Humanity history poses. Da, 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 da. I uh, want you to scroll about, down to yeah. where it says Muhammad and Islam. You see that Wikipedia? Okay, I got it right here. All right, click uh, on that. The Jewish request. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, when you, matter of fact, when you look at that, matter of fact, just, just. You ain't even got to click on it. Just read what it says. No, right just there. tell me what to do, brother. Tell me what to do. That's all. Tell me, what would you prefer me to do? That I'll do. So, you know, don't worry about it. All right. If you want me to tap it or whatever, I tap it. No, no, you ain't got to tap it because all we need okay. is right there. And when all you right, so right when now, you, what I have is Muhammad ibn Abd Allah ibn Abd Allah. Hold on, where you at? It should uh, say on 29. Muhammad in Islam. 129. No. Did you say 129? No, it should say on 29, November 629. Some people say oh, December. Oh, oh. Um, uh, boom, boom, boom. Let me go back and see what happened here. Matter of fact, I'm just going to send it to you. I'm going to send it yeah, to you right when now. I have Muhammad. Here's what I got with Muhammad in Islam. It says, granted the Jewish request to retain the lands under their control. Nah. Okay. Then so what Israel. I'm doing is 
right okay. now what I'm doing is I'm sending it to you and by text message. So okay. now when all, all right. you all you do, Mike, is when you get mm -hmm. it, just click on it. Cause I just all right. you about to get a message right now. So what I'm doing is I'm about to send this to you. It's going to be a whole lot of numbers, but all you got to okay. do is click on it one time, Mike. All right. There you go, Mike. Okay. So just click on it one time. You know what? I have a feeling it might not arrive because I'm on the phone. Oh, for real? Yeah, this phone does some crazy stuff, man. I mean... <laughs> I don't want to let you get a message by you on the phone. Stuff. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just came through. Just All came right. through. Okay. All right, so click on it one time. All right, I got it. I'm All here. Right. What is the meaning of ABC? Yeah, ABC, now, ABC, ABC. now just scroll down. Don't click that. Don't All right, I'm scrolling. Now stop where it says Mohammed in Islam. Okay, Muhammad in Islam. Now, just read that. All right, now, it's open to Wikipedia. Don't open it. Just read it. Don't click on nothing. Just read what it says, Muhammad. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back. Let me, oh, 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 okay. I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I was there. I'm there. Okay, okay. I clicked on it. That's why I didn't, didn't have it before. Right. Yeah. On 29 November 6, 2009, 6 of Ramadan, <clears throat> A-A-H. I know that A-H. What's the A-H? It's, it's with, what is that? Uh, after Muhammad or something like that. What the the meaning of what? The A A the A A. Let me uh, see. Muhammad that. set out with ten thousand corporate comp companions and stopped at a nearby place from Mecca called. Boy, his glasses are coming on now. Maruzan. When I got to click on it to read to read the rest. Okay, so. When you look, no, now when you you said you was uh, asking about what does the A H mean? Yeah, isn't that something to do with um I know that's something to do with Islam alone. Um let me see for you real quick. I don't like just saying something that um what does the A H stand for is what you want to know. All right. A H stands for. You know how we have Anno Domini, okay, Mitch, which I like saying C E, like year of the common Yeah, yeah, year. it's the same. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what we say on the Hira calendar. Okay, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's what A H, yeah. which stands for mm -hmm. in the year of Hira. Okay. okay, okay, so it, it's still basically saying CE. Okay, mm -hmm. but bottom line on December or November, some sources say December, some people say November, um, 629 CE, Mohammed set out with 10,000 exactly 10,000 companions when they entered into Mecca and took it over and destroyed the idols. So what I'm trying to show you is, now, I ask you to ask your pastor. Ask your pastor about Deuteronomy 33, verse 2. Because it talks about Moses, it talks about Jesus, and it talks about a final messenger. It talks about someone being in Arabia with 10,000 people. And from his right hand is a fiery law. That's going into a new book. Okay, so I've studied this. I would spend all day just looking at this scripture, looking it up, studying it. This is not something that I'm the only person that knows either. A lot what of books people, are you, what, what books are you pulling all this stuff out of? This is the Bible. What books do you have? This is the Bible. I'm just looking at the Bible. When I'm talking about studying it, all I'm doing is using the mm -hmm. Bible and then going to the Bible dictionary. I looked up in the Bible okay. dictionary what is Paran. Like right now, 
I can go to my Bible dictionary and I can type in Mount Paran. Because God does a okay. lot with Paran. Like he made the children of Israel wander in Paran. Okay. Now mm -hmm. Paran, um, in my Bible dictionary, it says abounding in foliage or abounding in caverns, a desert track forming the northeastern division of the peninsula of Sinai, lying between the Arabia on the east and the wilderness of shore on the west. Okay. So this same spot is the same place where David ran to for refuge. Um, this is the same place where the children of Israel journeyed um, after um, they didn't believe God. God sent what Moses sent 12 spies and the 10 spies did not believe they could take the land of Canaan. So God made them wander in the wilderness, in the wilderness until they all died except for the children. OK, this is the same mm -hmm. spot. OK, so when we look at Deuteronomy 33 and 2, the Lord came from Sinai. That's when Moses gave the law. OK, and then he rose up from Sierra. OK, Jesus talked about a comforter. Now, my brother, I want you to do me one more favor. I want you mm -hmm, to type. No do you have a Bible app or do you have a. I got a, yeah, I got a, I got a Bible, I got a Bible app. What, now type in comforter, type in what, comforter. What, what? Okay. Type in comforter because this is a huge confusion. Comforter. Type in comforter in your Bible app. In the first place, I want you to read that scripture. Now you want me to do it in the Bible or on something like a Logos this, no, 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 no. Just on the regular Bible app. Just type in. Regular Bible. Okay, okay, okay. All right, because I'm going to. I'm going to tell you what Bible. When I'm way exactly what I'm doing. All right. I got the online Bible. This is Bible Gates. Mm -hmm. Way Bible. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm going. Okay. Now you said in search and search. I'm putting comforter, right? Yep. Uh, Okay. It should bring up 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 3. Yep. All right, now read yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Read it. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm open that baby up. All right, 2 Samuel 10. What do you want me to read? Just 10, 3? Yeah. Now, my but question is, is, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. When you type mm -hmm. in comforter in your Bible, does it bring up all the places? Or Yeah, it, actually, actually, yeah, it brought up uh, Samuel... First Chronicles, Joel, Joel okay. Psalms, yeah. twice. So leave all yeah. those scriptures open. We don't want you to click on nothing. Okay. Just right. we're gonna we're gonna look through all of these because it's only twelve okay. times comforter is mentioned. All right. Okay. All okay. Right. So the first time, go ahead and read that. All right. I'm doing ten three right now. Seven ten seven seven ten three. Yep. <clears throat> but the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanan. Dear Lord, do you think because David has sent comforters to you that he is honoring your father? Has not David sent his servants to you to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? All right. So, so see the comforters th there's a people. Yeah, there's a story. And what happened? I'll tell you what happened real quick. OK, so what happened was. When David was running from King Saul, I know you know about that. King Saul trying mm -hmm. to kill him. Yeah. When I'm David, actually, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, when David was Go running ahead, from listening. when David was running from King Saul, uh, the king of Ammon was helping David hide. Okay, and so mm -hmm. when that king died, David felt bad. He wanted to show some kindness to his son, to the king of Ammon's mm -hmm. son. Because now, since the old king of Ammon died, his son is king now. And when that old king died, David was like, man, this is my brother. Even though he's not an Israelite, but this man kept me safe. He kept me alive. So David wanted to show kindness to this man. And so he sent servants. He sent people to show kindness to him. And so what mm -hmm. happened was the new rookie king had some of his own servants in his ear and was like, don't you trust David? He ain't coming in here to, to be nice to you. He about to take over this city. 
Okay, so mm-hmm. there's a whole I nother story. That. There's a whole story I was in that. To that action just the other night. That's a there's there's a whole big message in that. Okay, that's actually a picture of the Holy Ghost being sent out, but I, I won't do that to you right now. We just want to deal with what's actually well, going go ahead, on. Bro, put it out there, man. Put okay. it out there. I ain't going to. I ain't going to. I, I'm listening to you. Okay, so this is the thing. Here we here we have here we have um, the man is dead, and David. Let me, you, let me say this, man. Let me say something real quick. Okay. okay. I'm in the church right now, and I'm a Christian church right now. Uh huh. I'm not gonna lie about something. There's something, something. I don't know if it's where I'm at or what, but something's missing. Okay. So the only way I'm gonna find out what's missing is um, to learn. Okay. And you're coming from the Bible. You're not coming from the Book of Mormon or something like that. You're coming from the Bible. That's right. So when you come into the Bible, me being uh, uh, being part of the church, I have to listen to you, and I have to admit, brother, you're much further along than I am. So I'm the student, you're a teacher. All right. Uh, so I have to listen. So, brother, say what you got to say. All right. You know, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, my brother. I'm well, trying to learn this stuff before. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So yeah. So. Here we have the king of Ammon, he dies. And then David wants to be nice to the new king. So he's sending gifts. He's sending comforters. Now, my brother, comforters is servants. Comforters is people. It's a person. Now watch, we're going to read it. And now watch this. You can stay where you at. You can stay right there. It says, Thinkest thou that David doth honor your father, that he have sent comforters unto you? Who is the comforters? The servants. The servants. Now, I'm going to go to verse 2. If you can, get back to where you was at. I want you to, just, let's just go to chapter 10. And I want you to go back right, to the I'm same screen when I'm done. All right, we in 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died. And Hanan, his son, reigned in his stead or his place. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor your father, that he have sent comforters unto you? Have not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So my brother, this is a picture of God sending the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants Hold on, hold on one second. Yeah. Because my Bible has jumped over to the ESV. I need to get to the King James. Yeah, get to the King James, man. I try my best to study first in the King James, and if I don't understand something, then I'll go to the other books. But I like to deal with the King James because when I have to debate with someone or when I have to have a discussion, most well, people want to be in the King James. Because I can't debate you. You do understand that, right? Yeah. All right, all right, bro. So, so you there, right? <laughs> no, I'm trying to man, man. This thing, this app, it won't go to King James. Why isn't it going to King James? Oh, oh, man, this man. is a real good Bible app I got. Let me see if I can send it to you. Let me see if man, I can send this app to you. This, this is a real good one. It's called KJV Bible. See, I got my, my, my problem is my problem is I got this. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know. Hold on. Uh, okay. Oh, come on, man. Let me see if I can send this Bible to you, man. What will happen? Oh, here it is. Okay, man. Where they got this thing? But send that anyway. All right. All right. Just send it to you. All right. I got the Camel King James. But send that anyway. This one's a hard hit. That. 
All right, I'll send it to you. Okay, so now you got the King James, right? I got yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, All right. So now uh, we are at um, verse three. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor your father, that he hath sent comforters unto you? Have not David rather sent his servants unto you to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So they lying in his ear. David was a man of his word. He was going to be nice yeah. to this guy. But what did they do? They took his kindness and, and lied and said that he was coming to destroy the land and take it over. Verse 4, mm -hmm. wherefore Hanan took David's servants. He took the comforters. The comforters were people. So he took these, these servants of David. He shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle. Okay, that's proof that they wasn't wearing pants, Israelite camps. Mm -hmm. These men had on some gowns. Even mm -hmm. to their buttocks. And sent them away. So this man literally took their servants, took David's servants, cut off their beards, took off his badge of honor, and then they 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 cut his they gowns in the middle. This is what they did to the comforters. Okay, okay, and mm -hmm. this is a picture of people being disrespectful to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says that whatever you say about Jesus will be forgiven. But whatever you say mm -hmm. about the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven in this life, nor in the life to come. Okay? Whatever you say about my little brother is not going to be tolerated. All hell is going to break loose when you say something about the Holy Ghost. Now, watch this. They just did this man these people shamed. They shamed them. Now watch yeah, what yeah. David does. Verse 5. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. Man. And the king said, tarry or wait at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David. So now the children of Ammon are like, oh, man, David is pissed off. We might, we, we might as well get ready for war. <laughs> so look what happens. Um, going on, it says, when they saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon, verse 6, sent and hired the Syrians of beth Rahab and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of the king of Mecca, the king of Mecca, a thousand men and of its top 12,000 men. Now, we were just talking about the Syrians earlier, weren't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse seven. And when the and when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men and the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering of the gate and the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and Ishtar, Mecca, were by themselves in the field. So the king of Ammon hired the Syrians to fight against David to help them. So going on, and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abisha, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. So Joab, the commander of David's army, he split up his army. He said, look, we're going to put half mm -hmm. of y'all to fight against the Syrians. And the other half is going to fight against the children of Ammon. If the children of Ammon start winning, then we're going to leave the Syrians and come and help you. Vice versa, if the Syrians start winning, then we're going to leave the children of Ammon and come and help you. Now, this is Joab, man. He was a he was a great commander. Now, going on, I'm explain what I'm going to read what I just explained. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for you, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh and the people that were with him unto the battle against the Syrians and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, 
Then fled they also from Abishai and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarezer sent and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river. And they came to Helam. And Shobach, the captain of the host of Hadarezer, went before them. Now, this is the exact same scripture I sent you earlier. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen and smote Shobach, the captain of their host who died there. Now, that's exactly what you just read earlier. I didn't even know we was, be go we was going to be going here. But verse 19, and, and when all the kings that were servants of Hadarazer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the children of Ammon anymore. They was like, now think about this. This was an unnecessary war. And look how many yes. people were killed. This is how many people were killed. 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen. 40, horsemen. All those people were killed. Now, Remember that scripture that I gave you earlier? I want you to read the one in Chronicles real quick. Because I gave it to you, and I'll give yes. you the scripture again. Chronicles, what are you talking about? One Chronicles 19, 18? Oh, man, he's a good student. He's a good student. You actually took notes. Don't say it. Don't All say right. that. Hey, All, All right. right, let's go. Pat me on the back. <laughs> <laughs> My note taking is, is, you know, these bones are getting back into it, you know. Okay. Well, you're doing better than most. Fantastic. You're doing okay. better than most. Let me see. Uh, usually, the way I actually take notes is uh, essentially like you're recording. Uh -huh. I'll go back over and then I'll take notes out like that because uh, sometimes I can't keep up with the writing staff. My fingers are just, it's just, you know. So, uh, yeah, you right. got me on the back yet. Yeah. Right, so <laughs> yeah, you're Chronicles, funny, man. Uh, First Chronicles 19 1. Uh, so it's 19, you want verse 9, you want chapter 19, and then the verse you want is going to be verse 18. First Chronicles 19, verse 18. Now look at that. Now, Hold on, this book, this thing, that I, I wish uh, you had yeah, two Bibles. I wish you had. I, in order for this trick to work, in order for this to work, do you well, have two Bibles? Got two Bibles? I got, I got, I got, I got. Just tell me what's up. I got two, two Bibles. One just that all right. so small. One I Bible got, you know, got years ago, and the eyes don't function the way they used to. So one, one but, Bible. Uh, all right, so I'm at. Well, hold on, I'm at uh, First Chronicles 19. We're going down to 18, right? No, no, just verse 18. That's all I need. Just one verse. Oh, just verse 18. But I need mm -hmm. you to have another Bible. I need you to have... I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. I want you to go right, to... where am I going on another one? 2 Samuel 10, 18, where we was just at. All right, 2 Samuel. Wait. Sorry. Let me... So you're going to be able to look at both of these side by side because I told you the book of Chronicles is the same as the book of Kings and the book of Samuel. It's telling you all the information is the same information. It's the same stories. Only thing is the book of Chronicles has some different stories that's not. Different details. That would be better. They It has different details. Okay. That's in there. That's not in the book of Kings. And we'll look at a few examples of those. We'll look at a few examples right, of that. So, okay. All right. Second Samuel, you it? Yeah. Second Samuel 10, 18. You got that? Yeah, I got it. All right. So read that hold one on, first. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on, brother. Let these glasses focus. All right. Hold on. Oh, you got to wear the glasses? <laughs> yeah, I got to wear these reading glasses, man. My eyes, man. I got this small little Bible I got years ago, you know. Oh, okay. And I need to get one hundred and stuff. And so I got these reading glasses. 
the reason for that is a two two week um, the uh, magnifying on is two week for these words. I need to go up some, but I just haven't done it yet. All yeah. right, so but I see it. I see ten. I see eighteen. All right, so read I'm that ready. one first. <clears throat> okay. And the Syrians fled before <clears throat> Israel, and David killed the Syrians. And David and David killed of the Syrians the men. This is the ESV too much. Um, hold on. Me, It'd be nice if you had them both the same translation, or well, they're about to be the same. I'm just going. I'm gonna put this on the laptop. They're about to be the same. All right. Or if you gotta hold your place in one and then go to the other, you just let me know when you get it. All right. All right. Okay, let's go with you right now. All right. All right, hold on, be right with you. Open it up, come on, man. Oh, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. All right, here we go. Is that the King James? That's the King James. Yeah, okay. Uh second Samuel. Oh yeah, we yeah, second Samuel Oh yeah, I'm um, see, what I do is I, I normally have another phone that I just use for a Bible app that helps out too. You know, just another phone that you ain't really using. Yeah. You can put all your Bible apps on there. You can put your Bible dictionary and just use it just for study. And that's good too. Just for that. Yeah, yeah just okay. for that. I got you. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Yep. All right. I'm at 18. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen. And smoke Shabbat, the captain of their host, who died there. All right, now read First Chronicles nineteen eighteen. <clears throat> but the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men which fought in chariots and forty thousand footmen. And kill Shabbat, the captain of the host. Now, what's different? And when the you read enough. What's what's the difference between Second Samuel chapter ten verse eighteen and First Chronicles nineteen eighteen? Because it's the same All story, right, but on, something me something slow. is Let me read it slow. Let something. me go back and read slow. And All the right. Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots. How many? Seven hundred chariots. Okay, stop the right there. Stop right there. Just okay. stop right there. Now go to First Chronicles nineteen. Read that one. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David threw slew of the Syrians seven thousand men. Okay, so how fought. many did he kill right there? Seven thousand. Okay, so chariots. What? So that right there, that's just part of it. All right. Samuel says David no, we only 7, killed. We, we went from 700 to 7,000. We went from 700 to 7,000. Now, now go back to um, 2 Samuel. Now, keep reading. And verse 18 Samuel, again. Verse 9, 18, okay. And uh, 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen. Okay, stop right there. 40,000 horsemen. Says he killed 40,000 horsemen. Now go over here to First Chronicles. It says footmen. How many? Forty thousand footmen. Okay, so you, I mean, we're not, I'm not tripping about how the name Shobak is spelled different. One is spelled oh, Shobak. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, that's I that's that's, that that's a minor detail. That's a minor detail. That's not as huge as what we just read. First, second Samuel says that David killed 700. 
Now, Chronicles says he killed 7,000. But this right here is what really blows it over the top. It says that David killed 40,000 horsemen. These are people that are riding horseback into the battle. Okay. Now, in Chronicles, it says that he killed 40,000 footmen. Okay, so when you look at 2 Samuel 10, 18, and when you look at 1 Chronicles 19, 18, you see that there's some type of error that man got in there and, and you know, these, these scribes or whatever, mm how -hmm. they was doing. But you, you know for a fact that God is perfect. His work is perfect. We know that God is above all that. He's 100% mm -hmm. God of truth. Now, Mm -hmm. The problem with this is some people will be like, well, which one is true? They both can't be true. One of them is right. One of them is not right. Now, now this is just one story, brother. Now, I have a I have a, a book, OK, and I have a lot of different uh, scriptures that are like this that are in the Bible. OK, but what I wanted you mm -hmm. to see is that we we know. Now, trust me, brother, I love the Bible. I, I've been studying the Bible for a long time. I do most of my studying in the Bible. Most of the time when you hear my message, I am in the Bible, okay? I love the Bible. I noticed that. I love I the Bible. That. And I, I love... listen to your messages, bro. Okay. I love the Bible, and mm -hmm. I study the Bible. And by studying the Bible, I see this, okay? So I, I take notes of this stuff, and... What I want you to see is, okay, now we know this could be an error, but this is the thing. We got to deal with the real truth. And the real truth is, my brother, somebody, somebody is not being accurate, right? Is that true? Man, I would have to go with 40. You got 40. I would, I, I, I'm trying to think, man. 40, <laughs> why would you have 40,000 men on feet? I just said. Are you out? Right. You know, that's just, that's just, the feet. That's just crazy. So, I, I, you know, they, the story uh, is 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 bogus, man. It's bogus. Now, what I'm trying to get you to see is that our Bible does have errors. Okay, now we know mm -hmm. that there is. We know that we know that God Almighty. His word is in the Bible. We know that his word is in the Bible. But what mm -hmm. else we know is we know that God. As a matter of fact, let me let me take you to a scripture. Go to Jeremiah 8, 8. <coughs> Stop this and go to Jeremiah 8, 8. Because our God, I'm telling you, he told us that people would do this. He told us that people would do this. So go to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8. And you can read it in the ESV, KJV. Matter of fact, you can read them in both so you can understand. Read them my eight, eight. Yep. All right, here we go. Let's go. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Most certainly in vain, vain, may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Now read the next verse. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and that wisdom is in them. And what wisdom and is in them? So now I want you to read that wisdom. in the ESV. <clears throat> Starting off at verse 8. Hey, 
All right, Jeremiah 8, 8. Mm -hmm. what you're going to do. Easy as be where you at, where you at. Come on, act like you got some sense of it. Long as it's a different mm -hmm. translation, I, it don't matter. Just, I just want right, you to try go. to yeah, look yeah. at another. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right, Jeremiah H. I can wait for you, brother. You all right? I ain't doing Why nothing. No is this thing doing this? I ain't doing nothing, man. See, this is what happens when you get that Amazon. That Amazon tablet, where well, they be locking things down. <laughs> you, you know, it's like if you don't do it our way because half the stuff I can't even get on there I just really got this thing to read but man this has got a mind of its own and it's jealous I don't want nothing else on here I'm and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a website that's going to help Jeremiah you out eight. I'm going to send you All a right, website here we go. go ahead Jeremiah 8.8 8. <clears throat> how can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us but behold, the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. Woo! The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom is in them. Therefore, okay, that's I'm all I need. That's all I need. Now what I'm going to do is. Be wise to others. Boy, that's something else to take your wife and give to somebody else because you messed up. Yep, now Go look. Ahead. Now, look, this is the, mm. <laughs> that, that, that whole chapter is the fate of Israel. Now, there's so much in that that whole book. Now, like I encourage you when you get free, just when you have some free time, just start off at verse one and read all the way down. OK, but right here, okay. I just sent you something. OK. All right. I want you to click on it and open it. Oh, yeah. It should say Jeremiah 8, 8. Yep. All right. Now, I don't want you to click on anyone, but what I'm doing, brother, is I'm showing you ways on how you can study the Bible and you can get some good understanding. Yeah, please right do, here, when you look at that, it's showing you all these different translations of the same verse. And if you was to go to the bottom and it says additional translations, you can click that. And what it will do is it will just show all of them, all of these translations. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the NLT. Look what it says in the New Living Translation. How can you say we are wise? How can you say we are wise? Because we have the word of the Lord. When your teachers have twisted it by writing lies. Now, God was judging the nation of Israel for writing lies in the book. Now, that's our God, because we know that when you look at First Chronicles and when you look at Samuel, we see that one is saying this and one is saying that. Now, we know that God is not going to be blasphemed. And right now, Israel is giving the nations occasion to blaspheme the word of God because they haven't been that careful or cautious with the word of God. They were being manipulated. And they was writing and sometimes they was writing things out of their own heart. OK, this was the significance of Moses. Moses was a prophet, my brother, that what God gave him, he gave to the yeah, people. He was a prophet. Moses, the Bible, the Bible says that Moses, everything that Moses had, God wrote with his own finger. He was the picture of an accurate prophet. OK, now, when you when you learn Jeremiah 8, 8, you should have a greater respect for the word. God is telling you that the scribes are writing lies. And he's and he tells and he tells you in the Bible, in the last book of the Bible. Cut you off for a minute, man. Go I ahead. Cut you off. Go ahead. So what do you do about the New Testament? What? We hear this. We hear this. My, here's a, I got to cut you off, man, because you, you, you're making me, you know, you got my mind working here. I want to ask questions. I'm going to let you keep going. But tell me, what did he just say, though? Before you go on, tell me, what did you just get out of Jeremiah 8? 8, 8? What does the Bible say? <laughs> uh, what I'm getting, brother, is I'm wondering, I'm wondering about the New Testament, too. That's I know. I'm, I'm going to let you tell me, but I want you to tell me from reading Jeremiah 8, 8. Now, notice Christians and, you know, a lot of people want to tell you what the Bible means. 
I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm just going to I'm just going to show you with what the Bible says. How can you say we are wise because we have the word of the Lord teaches that twisted wise. Okay. So you tell me what does that mean? <laughs> but there ain't no need to it, it, it says when your teachers have twisted it, how can you say it means just what it says? How no. can you say that you're wise? Because we have the word of the Lord. I'm sitting here saying I got the word of the Lord, but yet my teacher has messed around and scribed it in a bunch of lies. They twisted the word. Now what is a scribe? What is a scribe? The scribes are the ones the scribes are the ones who uh written both the only scribes write the Bible. Yep, there you go. They're the, ones authored, they're the ones with the authority to write the Bible, not just anybody the scribe. I've heard the details of a scribe, and well, like, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll, let me put it like this. I'll just say, they would degree people of the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, you don't just go to anybody. You don't go to your next door neighbor who can write. They might be able to read and write, but no, you want to describe. Hold on, real quick, hold on. Hold occupation. on. Patient. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to go forth and tell me what you got to tell me. But I just wanted to see if you understood uh, what no, you I'm just read. I, I don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm just, just like, you know. Well, but I, but Jeremiah, Jeremiah 8, 8, right? Now, mm -hmm. let's look at that next verse real quick before you go. Because I want you to get some full understanding. Now, he said, how do you say you are wise? And the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. What does that mean? Certainly in vain made he it. What does that mean, brother? Hold on, hold on, my, my hold on, my earbud just died. We we meditate. We just, we chew. Hold on a second, hold All on. right. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So we got it where he's yeah. saying, how do you say we are wise? And then he says, and the law of the Lord is with us, which is a question. And then God says, well, lo, certainly in vain made he it. What was written in vain? The law of the Lord. The law of the Lord was written in vain. He's telling you right here. How can you say you are wise and you have God's word? I made this word in vain. You know why? Because your scribes have been twisting it. They've been twisting what I said. So I wrote it for nothing. Because now when people look at my book, they see some stuff in there that I didn't originally put in there. Now, when you go to verse nine, it says the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken Lo, They have rejected the word of the Lord. And then and then look what our God says. He said, what kind of wisdom they have? What kind of wisdom do a man have? How are you going to take what I say? Scribble it, scratch it out, twist it and then put what you say in there. That's what God is saying. And that's why he told us in the last book of the book of the Bible, he said he gave us a warning. He said, if you add to the Bible, I'm going to add a plague to your life. He said, if you take away from the Bible, I'm going to take your name out of the book of life. Now, that is Revelations 2, 22, mm -hmm. exactly 19. That's a famous <laughs> scripture. He's telling yes, you, look, he if you if you add to my Bible, I'm going to add a plague to your life. If you if you take away from my Bible, I'm going to take your name out of the book of life. God is serious about that. And the reason why he said that is because people did that. And I just showed you proof. I took you to Chronicles. I took you to Samuel. And then I took you to the actual warning where God says, look. You scribes are twisting my words. You're twisting my book. He said, now the, the word of the Lord is in vain. And remember, this is what Jesus was always getting on the Pharisees about. He said, y'all got the traditions of man. 
Y'all are writing the traditions of man. Remember when he was trying to make his disciples do different things? And he was like, mm -hmm. man, those are man mm -hmm. commandments. Those are man commandments. And then he simply tells his disciples, I got one more scripture for you, is he told them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Of the Pharisees. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, that is that is deep right there. Because Jesus went into a metaphor. Now we know that what what is leaven? Uh, leaven is what uh, is used to what is that? Isn't that used to rise the dough? Yes, the right. Bread? You're right. You are perfectly right, man, brother. You is on point. Leaven is yeast. <laughs> leaven is yeast. He said, "Beware of the Pharisees." Leaven. What is he talking about? What is he talking about, my brother? What do you think he's talking about? I'm going to let you tell me what you think he's talking about and then go on with the New Testament after. Brother, after. that might take me a minute to think about because I've actually I've read that many times, never really actually just pondered it. Yeah. But, uh, it's just beware of the rise of... The Pharisee, the lies of the Pharisees. It's deeper than lies. It's yeah, it's, it's deeper, deeper than, than lies because is. Jesus is talking about yeast. Now yeast. think about it. Do you know about the Passover? Do you, you know, know that God is? commanded the children of Israel uh, to make unleavened bread? That's bread without unleavened yeast. Bread. When he yes, pulled them yes. out of Egypt. He said, I want you to yeah. take a lamb for each house and I want you to cook it mm -hmm. and I want you to eat all of it. Don't leave none of it. And he said, you cannot eat any bread with yeast. Whoever eats any bread with yeast will be cut off. I used to always think about that. Why is he so strict about having any bread with yeast? Now, think about it. Bread with yeast is something that the children of Israel couldn't even have in a house. During the time of the Passover, my brother, they had to make sure there was no leaven at all in their living quarters. They had to make sure it was out of the house, not just eating it. Have something to do with trying to preserve it or something like that. Or? What the leaven in the bread? No, it was something. Some oh, man. Uh, I heard um, a preaching on it, and it was. Uh, Because there's something about they weren't supposed to. Oh, you go ahead, man. Go, go. All right. They wasn't I'll supposed to eat any bread with yeast. And, and what was the reason for that? Because that's the part that. This is the stuff these pastors, these teachers do not have any answers for. But I'm going to give you what I think. Notice just is what I think. And I'm going to show you scripture. Now, when he told them not to eat any bread with yeast, what was happen happening? This is the most famous event that God has ever done. Remember, oh, he was, that was he was, that, well, uh, who was he doing? What was he doing? He was killing what? Firstborn. He was killing the firstborn. Think about that. He was killing Pharaoh's sons and not just his sons, but the sons of the heaven. Animals, Everybody, everything. even the everything. animals firstborn had every to die. Creature. Everyone that had a firstborn son except if they was Israel, was mm -hmm. going to die. All right? And there was a great cry, and it was great mourning, and he told them that they need to take the blood with the hyssop, put it on a doorpost, and the destroyer would not destroy them if he see the blood, and they could not eat any bread with mm -hmm. yeast. So now when we go to Matthew chapter 16, the answer is right in here. Hold on, man. Yeah. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to start off at verse 1. Matthew, there you go. 16, 1. Yep. All right. <clears throat> the Pharisees also with the Sadducees. Now, you know what the Pharisees and the Sadducees are, right? Yes, were, I do know. They were the scribes. Thing. You know the difference between a Pharisee and a Sadducee? A Sadducee? No, uh, not exactly, no. Okay, a Sadducee is one who don't believes in 
the resurrection. A Pharisee does believe in the resurrection. Okay. And I'll give you that scripture later. Matter of fact, I'll give it to you so you can write it down. That way you're not just saying that I'm just going by what I'm saying. I want to make sure you see it well, for yourself. Well, I already know one thing for a fact, but I already know about you is that you're not going to go by what you're saying. I already know you're going to come with scripture, so. All right. You don't even have to say that. I already know that for a fact. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, Pharisees didn't look at Right. Okay. And that scripture is going to be, uh, let me give you, um, there's one in Acts I want to give you about the Sadducees. All right. So, I'm going to give you this scripture real quick. Pharisees don't be they believed in the resurrection. Mhm. Mm but the Sadducees the Sadducees did not believe. All right. And that scripture is going to be, let me see, let me give you a good one. Acts 23, verse 8. Acts you can make sure you write that down. And that reads, down. that reads, the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. No resurrection. Yeah. And they don't believe in angels or spirits, too. But the Pharisees believe in all those things. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they used to always debate each other. They used to always have discussions about this stuff. The Sadducees, they didn't believe in angels, they didn't believe in spirits, and they didn't believe in a resurrection. But the Pharisees, notice, the people that Jesus was all you always fighting with and always arguing with, they believed in those things. They believed in the resurrection. They believed in... Oh, that just went over your head. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. You'll catch it. What? What? Never mind. We, no, we're going to go back to the. No, uh, no, 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 no. You got to step back now. You can't do that. <laughs> that just went over you. No, no, no. no Let's no, read. No, we, Let's read. No, you got to. It's going to come out right here. And then you're going to be like, oh, damn. This is what he's talking about. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now, well, okay. Since you want it, my brother. Since you. No, since no, no. You, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see second. if you got it. Hold on. Alright. Alright, now you're reading Acts twenty three eight, right? Yeah. Okay, because I didn't I didn't go over there. I thought you just gave it to me, then we were still sticking on the other one. Yeah, we still so staying in sixteen. Yeah. I'm still in sixteen. Okay. But I just wanted right. to show you that when I said that the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, that you could see it from the Bible. Because it's always it's best when you can see. see it versus somebody telling you. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. Right. So I want you to see the that the said, Sadducees yeah. did not believe in a resurrection. Nor but the angel, Pharisees, they did. No spirit. But the Pharisees acknowledged them. Oh. Yep, they acknowledged angels, spirits, and the resurrection. Man, I got some really terrible study habits, man. Because, well, you know, I don't read through the book of Acts, man. And that's really the first time, you know, that's the first time that I actually see it. Yep. And there's more, too. There's more in the Gospels. They would come up to Jesus and say there is no resurrection, you know, but the scripture I gave you right there in Acts 23, that's a, that's the perfect one. That's how you know for a fact. What do the Sadducees believe? And God put that there for us to know. He wanted us to know what the Sadducees believe versus what the Pharisees believe. Now, we was talking about yeast, brother. Yeast is mm -hmm. something that yeast. what? rises right brother mm -hmm. right now yep. what is resurrection mm -hmm. <laughs> now you caught it what now you caught it now you caught it hold on hold on hold on hold on beware of 11 you don't okay you told them not to eat it not to uh No, man, what am I missing? I'm missing something because I'm confused with the rising. Yeah, yeah. The Resurrection and rising, brother. 
is the same thing, brother. Oh, brother, okay. come on! Now All you right, see. So it. you talk about the the um these uh because they're the Pharisees. They believed the in the resurrection. The, their belief, yeah, yeah. I the got Pharisees it. they believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees they didn't. Okay. Now, say, when we go beware, back to Matthew chapter sixteen of eleven of the Pharisees. Yeah. So now, that's the that's the scripture. So that's verse six. He says, "Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees." Now, Jesus, right now is speaking in a metaphor because he's not talking about yeast. He's going to prove it. Verse seven. And they reason among themselves. They was thinking, saying it is because we have taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, they didn't catch it. Just like what we was talking about right now. Now you caught it, but they didn't catch it. So he's going on and he's saying, Oh, ye of little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets you took up. Verse 11 is key. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, okay? So he's talking about the belief system that the Pharisees had. You know how every church has their own doctrine? Every church has mm -hmm. their own belief. Now, you can go in one church, and they real big on how you dress. You can go in another church, and they real big on if you are a tither or not then you can go in another church and they like well we believe in miracles you finna get up mm -hmm. and walk today you finna get out of that wheelchair then you can go in another church and they like oh you need to be baptized so every group of people has a certain belief system and this man okay right now these and I want to I want to I don't want to hit you with that guy yet. OK, I want you to catch up. I want you to catch up now. This man. All right. We was talking about named Paul, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We was talking about Paul. You want to know about Paul. Now, do you know who Paul was? Saul of uh, Tarsus. OK, what does the Bible say he was, though? He was a persecutor of the church. Okay, but what was his, what was he? Oh, oh, he was a Pharisee. Okay, so let's get a scripture. Not only was he a Pharisee, my brother, this brother, let me, matter of fact, let me give you the scripture. I want Wasn't you to, he a theologian taught by the man they say was the man of the, the man of the hour, Gamaliel? Gamaliel, yep. Gamaliel, yep. Yeah. You're right, brother. You is on point. That's Acts 534. But the one I want to give you is... I want to give you a scripture that's going to be right back where we was at in Acts chapter 23, verse 6. And I want you to read that for yourself because faith ignites read when, which you, one? You when you read that word for yourself out loud. When you read the Bible, when you read verses, it hits you. So Acts 23, 6, I'm going to give you the honor of Acts 23, 6. Okay. I'm going to let you read that. All right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now, when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. Pause right there. He said, I am a Pharisee. And he said, I am the son of a Pharisee. Paul was taught by Gamaliel, okay? Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrews. Let's get that. That's going to be mm -hmm. Philippians 3.5. I want you to get that. Philippians 
Philippians 3 5. All right. And I'm going to give you another scripture. We're going to go right back to Acts. I just seen it. Read that. Philippians 3 5. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee. He was a Pharisee, for real Pharisee. Now, I want you to go to Acts 26, verse 5. And then once we when we get off, you got a little homework for next Sunday. All right. Just a little homework. Next it ain't Monday big. or next Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like Monday. My bad. Monday at one. Right. Nah, bro, but Sunday's cool, too. All right. Well, let me look you, at my you, schedule. You said, Monday, you, you last, said Mondays and Tuesdays was best for you. So, yeah, they've Mondays been having is, me work the last couple Sundays. But this next Sunday, let me see. Let me see. Just just. Send yeah, me this Sunday, I'm good. This Sunday I'm good. All right. If Same something time, happens, eight, 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 yeah. If something happens, I'll text you. But yeah, I'm All I'm right. free that day. But if they call me in, I'm gonna get it, brother. If they call oh, yeah, me in, I'm gonna get it. No, no, no. But no, uh right now I don't work that day, all right? All right. All right, so now um you in Acts twenty six five. I am. Let's get that. All right. They have known hold on, let me go to the one. All right, so I got a both for a point, 26. Five. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Paul had a religion. He was in a sect. Uh, he was, at this time, what he was doing was, he was basically saying he was in a cult. He's saying I was in a sect. He said, I was living as a strict Pharisee. He's telling you about himself. Now, my question to you, brother, is for you to tell me in the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Now, we got to respect Jesus. We got to respect him. Jesus is telling us, how is it that you do not con you do not understand that I spake it not uh, to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Verse 12, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, but of the teaching of of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, right there is key. Your homework is to find out what that means. Ask a pastor. Ask somebody. Hold on. So my homework is to find out what uh, Matthew 16, 12 means. Yep. To find out what is the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, I'm going to tell um, you, I'm going to the... tell you what I believe it is. Now, no, what is, no, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, I, we, you, you know, let me, well, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, now. But see, but see, you're going to mess around and, and you, it's kind of like you're giving me a piece of, the, you, you're giving me some pie, you know, you help me out, which well, is cool. I got, let me, I got to let you but, know but, where I stand at, that way oh, okay, you can right, do your, you, you know, do okay. your homework and say, okay, well. All right, okay. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, let me write this, what does uh, Matthew 12. Uh, what we have? 16, 11. 16, 11. And 12. And through 12. Okay. And what is the 11 of the Pharisees? Yep. What is the 11 of the Pharisees? Because Jesus said, beware. He said, beware of the 11 of the Pharisees. Just Why like beware of a dog. He man. said, beware. Why did you walk away from the church, bro? Why did I walk away from the church? Mm -hmm. Well, brother, I've been and in. And understand the... something. Understand. I'm not. Uh, I, I really want to know because. Uh... <laughs> it wasn't adding up, bro. There was just a lot of stuff that was that was missing. It just. 
I just, when I seen the Bible and then I seen the church, it was just two different, two different things. And I, I was in it. I was excited. I loved going to church. Let me tell you something. The first I time believe. I went to church, my brother, was um, when I was on work. I was I was on work release. I was just getting out of prison. And before you get out, they send you to the work release. I was in the work release in Indianapolis. No, not not in Indianapolis. It was in um, it was actually in South Bend. I had two options. I can go to Indianapolis or go to South Bend. South Bend was closer to my city, Fort Wayne. So I went to the one in South Bend and I was in the work release. And the whole time I was in prison, I was studying the Bible. And so I was paying my tithes and, you know, doing my little offerings, you know, with my little job I had because I got a job when I was in the work release place. And then we got passes to go to church. And I had a good friend. He was a singer in there and he would write songs of the Lord and I would write songs of the Lord. And, you know, he was like, you can come to my church. And I was like, OK, he said, put in the pass. And so I will go to the church, man. And I, man, that first time I stepped in there, man, I absolutely loved it. They was playing, um, his mercy endure forever. And I was just like, wow, I'm in the church, man. I actually in the, on the carpet. It's not just having church in jail. You know, there's carpet, there's people, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> man, and I was excited, man. I had, you know, we had the pastor and. You know, it was a woman, it was a woman pastor, you know, and she was, um, she was preaching and, and she was into the, you know, the speaking in tongues and, and, um, you know, laying hands and all that, you know, and, you know, more of a, a Pentecostal type of feel, although they were non-denominational, they was like more of a, a Pentecostal and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, man. And I had got a whole lot of prophecies and all this stuff, people laying hands and, and, and saying stuff. And I just stayed with it, man. I stayed with it. I realized that a lot of people in the church didn't know the Bible. I was kind of shocked by that. And yeah, I was like, wow. And so um, I stayed with them for probably about... I would say about good two years, I had ended up getting out and going to a halfway house because I was told by a Christian lady uh, through a prophecy, she was just like, well, I think you should stay here and don't go back home. And I think she was saying that because she probably thought I was going to fall off when I got out. Mm -hmm. But I I was changed. I wasn't going back to the streets. I wasn't going back to selling cocaine or none of that. And so yeah. I think she was just trying to keep me around her and keep me safe. And so yeah. I ended up listening to her advice, and I stayed in South Bend. Ended up um, getting married, um, having my first child, and... Staying in the church world, just going from church to church, though, man, because it was like one church would be off and then you go to another church and they'll pick up where they off at. But then they off here. And so it got to the point where I literally my last I was saying nine years, about eight to nine years. I just kind of like. Just started reading the Bible at home. I just was like, nah, man, this stuff is off. I didn't had all type of prophecies, all type of lies. I didn't seen so much lies. I didn't seen so much, and I was just like, well, maybe God wants to do something with me. I, I just maybe I just need to chill, you know. Let me just study the Bible. Let me just study that. I study the Bible, study the Book of Mormon, study the Apocrypha, study the Quran. Uh, real big on reading books, real book, big on dictionary, Bible words, all that, Hebrew, Greek, concordance, all that. And I was just like, wow, man, this is, is not necessarily something wrong with the church. Is There's some inconsistencies in the Bible that's not adding up. So 
once I realized that the issue wasn't just the church, it was the source of the church, which is the Bible. And then I got to the point where um, I said, you know what? I'm just going to study the Bible at home. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine it and then I'm going to read um, the Quran. And, you know, before I even got to that point, I, w I would read the Quran and I would read them. But then I would just go back to the Bible, just go back to the Bible, go back to the Bible, go back to the Bible. And then I started seeing things that was in the Bible that was consistent with the Quran. So I'd made myself a test. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I was in the Israelite camp. I said, you know what? I'm going to take all the things that I disagree with and I'm going to match it up with the Quran. The number one thing was the virgin birth. I said, let's see if the virgin birth is true. The Quran says the virgin birth is true. In Christianity, there's a mix up. The Israelite camp I was going to was saying that Josh, I mean, was saying that Joseph was the father. After studying it, I came to agree with the Quran. Then I went to the topic of all nations being saved. When I went to the Bible, it was telling me that Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep. And we know that Paul, he talks about the Gentiles, but I, I want to go by what the rabbi is teaching. I want to go by what Jesus is teaching. Jesus, and according to the Old Testament, he was talking about gathering the nation of Israel and he was talking about saving the nation of Israel for the most yeah, part. He did come. I agree with you. He did he, come for the lost sheep of Israel. He came for the lost all, sheep of the house of Israel. And so yeah. that's when I went. And then once I really, really studied the New Testament, Paul is talking about gathering the Gentiles. And and I seen that that inconsistency because Jesus told his disciples, he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. He said, don't go to the Samaritans, which was the northern kingdom. He said uh, some of them were remnants of the northern kingdom. And he, he said, go just rather to the lost sheep. When the woman came to him and she wanted a miracle, he was like, woman, you know, this bread is not for the for the. Um, basically, he said, this bread is for the for the children. And he called her a dog. You know, I mean, she ended up getting her blessing. But. Jesus, from the Bible, I seen that he was only sent to the lost sheep. But then I started looking at the Old Testament and it talks about how um, God's house will be a house of prayer for all people. And then I looked at how Jesus said somebody was going to come after him. He talked about a comforter that will lead and guide us into all truth. And then it talks about revelations, people out of all nations and coming in. So I seen from the Bible that in the Old Testament... There was scriptures talking about the whole world uh, being able to be gathered. But then I seen Jesus talking about being sent to the lost sheep. And then I seen Paul talking about the Gentiles. And so I made my conclusion that I do believe that God will save all people. And, and the Quran talks about God saving all people. And I know that Israel once was on top, but then they came on the bottom. They once was God's chosen people, but they messed up. And I seen that. So then I said, OK, now let, let me go to another topic. I said alcohol. I'll say Christians are confused about alcohol. In my camp, they drink hard liquor. They drink beers. Um, they just say they're not getting drunk. And I never understood what was the purpose of drinking if you're not going to get tipsy. If I'm a drink, I'm going to get tipsy. If I'm a drink, I'm going to drink till I feel good, till I feel woozy. I'm going to have another shot. I'm going to have another shot. So the that's whole idea, <laughs> right? Hey, if you're going to get tipsy, you're going to get tipsy. Okay, that's, that, that's what it's about. Because you know? <laughs> it don't taste good enough to be about anything else. you know. Right. So then. It's not Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's not Kool-Aid, you know. So once I, I said, you know what? Brother, I had some, I don't mean because I had some black velvet one time uh -huh. at a party. Oh, brother, who? It went down and came up. <laughs> okay. Girl. No, it's, it's, it's not, it, no, 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 it's, no, no, that's not a dinner drink. Uh, you know, that's not Kool Aid soda or whatever. No, right. Lemonade, no. 
That's there for one reason. Right. And I drank and I drank that black velvet for one reason. <laughs> to get tipsy, right? Yeah, but I remember that wheel well, man. Cause I mean, brother, as soon as it went down, that baby started coming back up, and I was dizzy as I don't know what. Yeah, man. Right. Go ahead, man, because I understand what you're saying. So then I was like, well, is alcohol for God's people? I read scriptures that say whoever is deceived by alcohol is not wise. In Proverbs, um, even Solomon's mother, she said, wine is not for kings. Strong drink is not for kings. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it talks about, and then Paul says, don't be drunk. Uh, but then Paul tells Timothy to have a little wine for his stomach. And in my mind, yeah. I'm like, well, why don't he just heal his stomach? He's doing all the miracles. What? So it and when it comes to alcohol in the Bible, you have scriptures that say um, wine makes your heart happy. And then you have scriptures like Daniel. Daniel was like, I'm not going to defile myself with the king's meat mm -hmm. or his wine. And he was mm -hmm. a wise man. So you have scriptures that justify alcohol and then you have scriptures that don't justify alcohol. So now and, you got a battle. Yeah. So that's why I said, well. The Quran says no alcohol, none. And so I haven't had no alcohol, man, man. Let me see. It's probably been like three years I haven't had a drop. But I, and that was before the Quran. That was before the Quran. That was before that. Mm -hmm. I was just, I realized that the, um, my whole life, my, my, my dad that raised me, they were drinkers. And I've always been around alcohol, and I used to always see them drunk, coming home with glasses on, <laughs> and got in a fight, black eyes. And, you know, I was always, man, around alcohol. My dad that raised me, man, he was an alcoholic. So I was turned off by alcohol. But when I got older, I liked it. I, I mean, I always I always liked smoking weed. I always liked smoking weed since a young kid. You're a bad man. So I like smoking more weed, but when I got older, I was like, man... It's no fun just to smoke weed. I gotta have me some some uh, tequila with it. I gotta have me some alcohol with it, man. You know. And then I was smoking so much weed, smoking all the good. You know, I'm in Cali, so you know I'm getting all the best stuff. And you know what? I realized that I really wasn't even getting high. I really was just wasting a lot of money. Sometimes I would get some good mm -hmm. stuff. Sometimes I would get some bad stuff. And and it costs money. That is expensive. I said, you know what, man? You know what? Skip this. Get a good job and take a drug test, and I fail. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of getting high. So I haven't been high in probably about three years or drunk in about three years. And it was because of life choices. It had nothing to do with nothing mm -hmm. spiritual. So when I was in the Israelite camp, they was offering me alcohol. They was trying to get me um to have a beer or something, you know, saying, hey, man, you from the tribe of Judah. You know, Jesus drank wine and all that. And I was just like, you know, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I, I wouldn't drink. I want to study the school and find out if the teachings was right. That was the main reason why I was there. So then I found out that, you know what? I'm going to go with no alcohol. If the Bible is saying don't do it and the Bible is saying do it and the Bible talks about the scribes writing lies, I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to go with no alcohol. <laughs> I ain't missing nothing, okay? I got more money, and I'm more responsible, and so no alcohol. So then I went from alcohol to virgin birth, and then I went from all nations being saved, and then I went into the topic about Jesus being God, and you know where I stand on that, and then I went into Jesus uh, dying for the sins, and then I made my decision with that, and so all of the ways I was believing, brother, the closest book that agreed with the way I believe was the Quran. Now, the Quran and the Nation of Islam had a lot of differences and a lot of things I wasn't used to, but I realized that this was well, best well, for let me. Let me cut you off. Let me just ask you, are you, are you with the nation or are you just, you know, I don't know how to say, just Muslim, you know. Well, right now. Because this brother, this brother that I know, you know, I used to go with him to the, when I was in between. I left the church and stuff mm -hmm. in between, and he he uh, encouraged me to come with him down to the mosque. And it was it wasn't the nation; it was you know a mixture of people and stuff. Oh, it was okay. A, a, a Indian or Arabic mosque, but there yeah. was you know a mixture of people in there. So that's am I, I with the? Asking, you know. Okay, okay. So yeah. am I with the nation right now? 
I am doing my prayers, doing my, my washings. I'm doing my prayers and I'm following. And right now I'm connecting. <coughs> I was trying my best to connect with one of the guys who's stationed in Bakersfield about a Maz, but I, I love black people and I love my people. Yeah, and so right now, you. right now, I am just praying for God to give me guidance on whether he wants me to join the nation yeah. or go to another, um, uh, just go to a, a standard um, mosque. I really, really want to be a part of the nation of Islam. The only mm-hmm. thing is I just don't want to get caught up in the traditions of man. I don't want to get yeah. into the point of, um, you know, all these, these weird, um, you know, uh, beliefs about, other people being messengers and you know and i don't i don't want to i don't black people don't we have an issue with idolatry i don't want to idolize you. as much as i respect black my my people i don't want to idolize no black people but at the I same you, time man. i want i don't i know that arabs they have uh, they have issues with racism i know i know that I know that there are good Arabs. That's an individual thing, though. You know, that's an individual thing, and I know we all love our own people. I mean, the white man is going to love his people. The Arabs is going to love his people, and we should love our people. So it's like I I want, I desperately, and I really do, I really do, man. I'm praying. I'm either like, man, the Lord, you're going to do something with me, and we're going to do something new. We're going to pioneer a movement. Or I'm just going to jump in there. Because if I got to join any mosque, I, I want to join a black mosque. I want I want to be around people I, I can you, relate to, people that yeah, I can help. Man. I don't want to be around people who deal with racism because that's going to give me a bad, that's going to mess up things. And I think it's yeah. only right for me to be a part of something where some people look like me and I'm not racist. I'm not racist. No, hey brother, I'm, gonna I'm tell not you racist. That's what's wrong with that's what's wrong with us, bro, is that we seem to act like there's something wrong with us coming together righteously, you know. Right. But everybody else can do it. But then for some reason with us, you know, uh, no, man, you're supposed to be about, I always say you're supposed to be about your people first and everybody else afterwards. Your neighbor is, your neighbor is a stranger, but right. you're supposed to be. And if your neighbor comes to see things your way, you know, and stuff like that. But you're supposed to reach out to your people. Nation's supposed to build a nation. Yeah. The nation. That's yeah. right. And that's, that's why I always look at. That's why when I hear the um, when I hear the brothers, uh, the 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 Israelites, and I hear them with that complaint, and I hear it sounds to me like envy that you have. But then you know, the Lord in Jeremiah 29, He told us what to do as a nation, and if we would just follow it, you know, oh tells you build your own houses yeah let you your marry wives and marry and then and, and, and continue having babies yeah build your own vineyards have your own own businesses and stuff and and the welfare of the country the welfare of the state you're in will be you'll receive your welfare will be the welfare of the state and we're supposed to be involved in in uh um uh i believe in uh public you know um what am i saying local politics and stuff like that because people are passing laws on our children to, you know evil people Passing mm-hmm. laws on our children to get them to, you know, break all of God's laws, you know. Okay. But I think we just kind of, I, I, you know, and I look here and I want to tell them, I said, brothers, have you all ever just taken a good look at what you keep going to Jeremiah, but you don't go to Jeremiah 29. Right. When the Lord tells you what tells the, the, the letter to the exiles, he tells you exactly how to prosper in the land you are as a nation, not an individual. Yep. You know, we always want to knock each other up against the upper side of the head and stuff like that. Yep. You know, but, um. Yeah, man. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. My pastor did something that kind of messed me up. Um, and that was John John 35, John 10, 35. And uh, so I asked him about it, you know, and stuff, you know, and uh, my understanding of, you know, and he said, and he said, as he, sometimes I even question myself sometimes. Sometimes you can get so, how do you say, heavenly minded, that you know earthly good. Yep. Everything he said, he, he he hit me back up and he said, dude, that's confusion. He said that verse means that there's heavenly beings. It's like the Lord says in like in the Bible when he said the, the spirit was hovering over the face of the earth, mm-hmm. over the uh, 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 over the waters. 
he described it like, no, nah, that's not people. That's 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 uh, spiritual beings who have been given charge over the nations. Now, when he said that to me, that messed me up because and it's sticking with me because, bro, you're telling me that Jesus looked back. He called those rulers of the Pharisees. He called them gods. So that means that he was either looking in back of them or was he looking through them? Because if it's spiritual beings, he wasn't talking to the I mean, those was human beings that was asking him talking to him he's he's battling with he's debating with the uh pharisees mm -hmm. and so so you know and that 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 brother that kind of that kind of messed messed me up so i kind of in and out and stuff like that they be wondering what be going on and stuff like that but that kind of messed me up because uh that's not what the that's not what the scripture that's not some spiritual beings hovering over men in control of nations and stuff like that it didn't make no sense and then what it says in 82 uh psalms um are you like, god I, I yeah them, yeah you are i god. said and, and i said him i said i said those i said those descriptions that he given those are descriptions of people yeah. not some spiritual beings hovering he's talking about being you know uh injustices being done to the people those are people that are in charge of laying down and living out god's law and applying them to the people in the community governing anyway uh -huh. and you're and that's spiritual beings and that brother just kind of that messed me up and still messed me up to this day because I want to talk really get to him about it, but I know it's going to end up in an argument. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just got to be like, all right. Yeah. I see where he goes. And, and see, and, but it shouldn't be that way. It no. shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't. I should be able to ask it, ask a question with no fear of having an argument with you. But the way when he wrote back, when he typed me back and said, bro, said, dude, and usually he don't never use the word dude. So I could just imagine he was his passion behind him. Dude, yes, dude, that's straight confusion. And he's never hit me back like that. And I said, oh, wow, man, this, he must lie. He's really, <laughs> and I said, okay. I just run back and said, okay, now I understand. No problem with it, you know. Well, but, you got something else bro. to ask him now. But, uh, oh, I'm about to get kicked out of there, bro. I can tell that now. Ask him about the 11 of the Pharisees. Yeah. What is that talking about? Now, what is bread? What do you mean? You what is bread? Me, you, you, you get me with some stuff, bro. Now, you know, you know, I mean, just saying, like, you know, in general, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but bread by alone. every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we know mm -hmm. that in the Bible, bread is, is representing what? Word. You know, give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. Forgive us mm -hmm. our trespasses. Mm -hmm. So when we think of bread, bread also represents the word. Okay, that's why. Yes. Remember when they would have the yes. daily bread? This is your daily bread, your daily bread. Mm -hmm. God's word is bread. He's the bread of life. Mm -hmm. He's the bread of life. Okay, so you, you think about that, God's word being bread. And then you think about when he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay, he's going into the teaching. That's how, that's why he said the leaven of the bread you know, that, that's why he said that, because he was going into the word of God being tampered with. He was going into Jeremiah chapter eight, verse eight. You, you, you know, Jesus knew that scripture. He knew mm -hmm. that the scribes were always twisting what God said. And yeah. so when you 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 do your homework this week and like I said, brother, um, however you believe is is how you believe we're not we're not forcing I'm nothing on nobody I, I, we just I'm where, no no well i'm where i am because I, I have to say this honestly i don't mean to cut you off but uh but i gotta be honest i'm where i am because i've never been in a teaching a really teaching church okay and i used to really study on my own but then when you know then i got lazy and stuff like that and i used to study the daylights out of the bible then i got lazy and like i said i'm just coming back around and things and um but um but uh I, it's something about i don't know um a teaching i just yeah really i just never really been a part of i mean you're talking about i started out this 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 newness of life came to me back in 90 uh what was it 91 mm -hmm. and uh and started out going good and then it was all just pentecostal and all it was basically you know don't read you ain't got to worry about the bible you know you just go ahead on and 
you know, speak in tongues and, you know, and get your healing, get your prophecy and, yeah. and you know, and jump up and down, dance and, you know, come to service and stuff like that. And, you yeah. Know, there was no, there was no standard, hey, let's go, because my pastor, I want to ask him this. Because I think this is, I, I think this is what he should do. But I know it's going to be a fight. I, you know how you sense the temperament of the people and stuff like that. Yeah. The man went to Bible college. He got his Bible degree. Bro, why don't you take everything that you learn and teach it to your people? I don't understand why they. I don't understand. You know, and he don't. And and but he wants a church to that that reaches out to people and be able to, and that's what, that's what gets me with the church is that you, you, you have, you have, you say you've gone to school and you got your degree and stuff like that, but yet you don't pass on what you learned. I don't understand it. I mean, you know, this cause I can't sit and get it with a study with him like this. Um, like you and I do, I can't do that with him because okay. um, I, there'd be, because, because, See, I, he's too Pentecostal, you know. I have it, but but it's just you know. But I, I it, you know, it's too much of that spiritual. Like I said, like he's like three ten. I really want to talk with him about that because it's bro. You really shouldn't be going around telling people, you know. But that's not for me to say. But it's like, and it will cause a division. Right. I can't. I cannot agree with you on Jer on uh, John uh, thirty five ten. You're wrong. Because if you, that means that Jesus was talking either over them people's head, looking up into the sky, but he wasn't talking to them. But yet in the Bible, it was like he was talking to them, calling them gods. So, you know, it wasn't capital G O D S, it's little g, you know. So, you know, you got to go with the word. You know, this is what the word says. I know what you might want it to say, but here's what the word says. He said it, Jesus himself in there said it. Uh, 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 didn't the word come? The word came down to what is the word came down to you? And, uh, what was it? I, oh man, I can't think. But uh, the law. Oh wow, man, jeez. Wasn't it written in your law that the word came down to you and ye are gods? I guess that's how it goes. Or close to it. But uh, anyway, um, you know, I mean, he's talking to people right there and it's like bro you know we can't know. go further until and we can't go any further until that's answered because that's highly important because you're changing the scripture yeah completely you're saying these are spiritual beings he's talking to and yet the bible says he's talking to the pharisees that's who he called you know so you know but yeah man yeah yeah but let me shut up no you good i'm listening to you shut up. so you know I'm glad that you letting me know where you at with your, your conversation and things like that with them. And I know what I need to watch out for. And like I said, um, the way we talk, you know, we we hear one another out and we also um, let one another know where we stand. And, you know, I wanted you to see um, there's a lot of stuff that's in the Bible. Like today, you know, just think what we went through. We went to Chronicles. Lot, we went through Samuel. We that's seen, a lot, bro. That was a lot, wasn't it? But that, but see, that's why I like to. That's how I like to study. You know, so see, you know what's so bad? I shouldn't be saying this, but this is so bad, man. Man, I feel like I'm condemning condemning the brothers at the church and stuff. But I can't study with none of them like that. Dang. Because if you do, and you say, and and if I go, well, I disagree. All of a sudden, it's a, oh, well, it's like, man, y'all got to, you know, y'all got to be open to. it stuff like that if you're wrong you're wrong right if you're right you're right right but don't just say i'm right period that's wrong right. until you actually are when you are you are but just don't just because well well over here we believe that this this no 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 because now the whole body in there believes got the whole body in there believing that those are spiritual beings i think that's 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 destructive man it's changed the whole word yeah so you know, yeah, today we, anyway, we went through a up, lot. But that's a lot, brother. That yeah, you put me through a lot, bro. We went so I got a, a good study though, I gotta go through, so that's good for next Sunday. So I'll be with you on that at eight o'clock. All good, right. Man. That's Matthew so, uh, six and um eleven and twelve. I'm gonna be honest with you about something else too, man. All right. I sensed when I first heard you, man, when I first heard you on the um on the um 
uh, uh, video, uh, not uh -huh. the video, but the audio. Yeah. Brother, because your voice, man, you be bold and I'll be like, man, <laughs> it's like sound kind of like Mr. Arrogant or something like that, you know. Oh, and stuff, bro. But I realize that, but but I realize that's just how you are, you know. No, no. I mean, this is you know, this is always first impression, you know. And, and here <laughs> I am, you know. Hey, brother, you talking about Christian? You talking about my Jesus and all of this, brother? You know, but it's automatic, you know. That's automatic, right? But you know, that 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 first that first after that, man. I don't know, but I, you know, I, I I gotta say, man, something moved because something told me. I said, man, this is a righteous brother, man. I mean, I listen to you, man. How you? with your kids and your family and stuff like that, man, and and, and stuff, man. And I said, man, and, you know, you talk about, you know, Lord said, without holiness, if be ye holy, for I am holy and stuff like that. Right. You know, I sense that in you, brother, even though I have yet to see your face, I know that's who you are, you know. And, um, you know, but so, you know, um, and, and I was saying to myself, I said, man, like that, I said, like, man, I don't even want to fight with my brother here, Lord. I'm gonna have to tell him about, you know, the truth about, you know, where his wrongs is and this and that. Then I realized something. I said, well, maybe, you know, I had to realize something, you know, something happened that night at that Bible study. And now the search begins. You never know where that search is going to end up at. And so I can't say that my search is going to end because I do question whether or not my search is going to end as I don't call myself Christian. I just say Jesus said church and and disciples. So that's really what I use. I really don't use Christian. But um I really don't know if I'm gonna end up at the in 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 end a part of the church. You mm -hmm. know. And um and uh you know but yeah man but uh, I just say that man because you know man um you know I get good vibes from you brother you righteous brother man I know what you say you are you are and um and stuff and you come with the word you open the word and you speak the word you let the word do the talking and the teaching and stuff like that so you know cause we don't have to go back over that you know more than once anyway you, you know stuff like hey you know but um at least uh, you know but uh appreciate you man you know right so, yeah you know same here bro i appreciate you man we we had a little rough start, man, but you know, you a genuine brother. Oh, it's supposed man. to be that way, man. Man, what they made you cussing my Jesus, man? What's wrong with you? Who are you talking to? I shot a la ha 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 so uh yeah man it's been good brother so i'll be ready i'll do my homework i'll be ready man and i will talk with you next sunday until then man blessings to you and your family my brother stay strong stay easy man hey blessings to you and yours bro and i'll be waiting for you sunday right yes sir eight o'clock all right eight o'clock all right my brother all right blessings yeah. bro all right likewise, likewise. All right.